Hello and welcome to Antipode D&D, a show in which a bunch of Australians play Dungeons and Dragons in a setting partly inspired by prehistoric Australia and New Zealand. I am David, your Dungeon Master. I am joined by Kynwen, Doug, April and Zindi, as usual. So, uh, let's get right into it because we finished at, uh, well not quite a cliffhanger, but certainly a what happens next moment last week. Um, so, our heroes, they signed up to participate in a team fight for a day of games in the city of Providence, with their survival guaranteed by the Coruscant Academy and Clerics of Dismina. It is a non-lethal tournament, survival is guaranteed. So, our heroes donned costumes, adopted stage names, and called themselves the God Touched. After watching some pre-fight entertainment, including an archery tournament, wizard target practice, and a heated political debate, the arena was cleared. Several individuals entered, wearing the vestiges of mages, clerics, and druids. Some proceeded to sculpt the arena using stone shape, create water, and other spells. And if you're having trouble remembering this, it's because I forgot to mention this last week, and I'm just slipping it into the recap like it happened. And yeah, you're not supposed to remember you know, that. Anyway, so... Trenches were dug and filled with water. Uh, crenellated walls were erected in front of the plat wooden platforms at either end of the arena. And yeah, on each platform, uh, a mage came out and placed a chest of some kind and a soft glow appeared within each chest as if they hold something magical. The other mages pre performed a short ritual that caused runes to light up around the four columns that are inside the arena, and a wave of power swept across the arena. The crowd cheered as they knew that this signified that their space was ready for combat. Uh, Orsi, you, you f the magic in this area is now so strong, the protective magic um, that protects... Uh, everyone in there from dying, but also protects the crowd above from any stray projectiles. Um, and, yeah, and also you can feel that washing over you. Uh, Morzod, you can feel um, yeah, the divine protection of, of a powerful god um, is somehow infused into everything that's happening. Like, Dismina herself might actually play, be playing an active role in protecting everyone in here. Vitericus, you can see the shades are all excited. Um, they're, you know, they're still there. They haven't fled or anything, but they're, they're, they seem to be anticipating something. There's just a little more presence to them. Dagmar, you see glowy lights on the runes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the opposing team was introduced first, a gnome called Ankle Slicer, a high elf called Loverboy, a mysterious figure called the Grey Hood, and a shirtless half-orc called No One. Together they are the free fighters. Then our heroes entered as the Nightingale, Brunhilde Eye Shooter, Supercell, and the Iron Chef. And together they are the God Touched. And with that, uh, Rexlin announced, Let's play some global! And battle begin began. So I am adding everybody to the initiative tracker. In Foundry, please roll initiative for yourselves. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, I always forget where the initiative oh, okay. button that's is. Fine. It's there the it little is. fist, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, crap. Um, that happened. Oh, well done. We have to rock off for the first spot, Ozzy. Uh, how high's your dex? Uh, probably lower than yours. Mine is, uh, 12. I got a plus three, so yeah, mine's there, 16. Yep. Cool. Yep, so Ozzy will go before Morzod. wonder if I can... Because they're not in that order. I mean, if you can't change it, it's not. Yeah. Look, I'm just going to say whichever of you wants to go first right. can do it. I don't want to punish people for, you know, having to go high initiative. I feel like you should have the option to go when it suits you. So, uh, the very first thing that happens is uh, the Grey Hood uh, is the first to move with an initiative roll of 22. So they are going to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, so they, they run over 
to the uh, base of the wooden platform, uh, but they're not going to double dash to climb it. Instead, they're going to take the first shot of the tournament. And they are going to target... Uh, Vitericus seems the most obvious target at this point. It's a heck of Always. a longbow. What's the range on that thing? Uh, sure, I'm pretty, pretty around and pretty far. Yep, excessive. Mm. Long My short bow is uh, eighty feet. Yep, yes. long long bows have a base range of one hundred and fifty feet. Is that and, what Gray has? Yeah, and they can shoot up to six hundred feet, but they're um, only accurate within one hundred and fifty feet. But that covers this entire space. So, ooh, it's not a good roll, but it's a good bonus. Does a 14 hit Vitericus? Uh, it sure does. My AC is 13. Aww. Okay. You need to fix that. So, first moment. that is, uh, with that hit, you take a terrible roll. Only six points of piercing damage as the first arrow uh, goes into you. And oh, now... Okay. For the second arrow, uh, the Grey Hood seems to be excited about his opportunity here. So uh, you, um, you see the Grey Hood, uh, a glow comes over the arrow uh, that they knock, uh, the second arrow that they knock into the bow, as if some magical force is empowering it. And they are again going to target Batericus. Oh, it rolls even worse. That's a 10. Hey. Uh, I'm going to holler back, missed me in Undercommon. Okay. Uh, it misses us. This arrow flies out. It lands in a square near the four of you, um, and you actually see uh, a small explosion of bright energy, and you're very glad that that didn't land on the four of you because that could have been a problem. Um, he shows no reaction to your... Uh, taunting but uh, it's very hard to see through the mask anyway uh so that is the gray hood's turn morzod or orsi who wants to go first i want to orsi okay if, if you don't mind unless you have oh. something no 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 go for it right, i'm here to be you. a blunt instrument like seriously <laughs> five where's the Wait ball on. incidentally ah yes thank you for that so the oh, ball yes. i should probably mention that uh, I mean, the Grey Hood wasn't going to run for it anyway. So, the ball. Uh, can somebody roll d4 for me, please? This will determine which of these four squares it'll land in. Not fitty. As it gets thrown into the arena. Anyone but Vithericus. So many ones. Well, I mean, That's one three. could be fine. Okay. Three. One, two, three. So, three. the ball lands. Oi, I'm trying to draw. Why can't I see you? The ball lands. There. That is my incredibly poorly drawn ball. Well, we won't get copyright infringement from any uh, Warner Brothers JK Rowling. <laughs> uh, it, is, it is it is the glow ball, and you can actually see that it, it is glowing softly. Uh, it's about... Ah. it's it, Size-wise, it's basically a juggling ball, and it looks like it actually has a kind of soft fabric quality to it so it's not oh, like man, you, you can ball. yeah you're not going to knock it uh is it an action to pick up the ball uh i have these rules i wrote them down um just want to ask before I it is it. yeah it is a bonus action to pick up the mm. ball as long as it's okay. at your feet no I, I need my bonus action um i will in that case I believe he's 60 feet away from me. I also is going to cast Mind Sliver on Ooh. no one. Whoa. Okay. So, is that... It's a cantrip, but he's going to do a real dramatic. <laughs> is, uh, does no one need to make a saving throw? Intelligent saving throw, 14. Oof. Get your Yu-Gi-Oh on. Mind crush. Yeah. Well, his intelligence is terrible, but his roll is good. He gets a 15. Nine. Ah, garbage. I don't think he takes any damage. Doesn't even take the reduced amount. Is that a bitty no. thing? Well, it's, it's a cantrip, so. Oh, right. um, yeah, okay. Orsi is going to... I tried. <laughs> and uh, you it's think those bad. columns are wide enough to offer you some degree of cover if you hide behind them? Even yeah. Though. 
Okay, is that your turn, Orsi? Yes, it is. Okay, Morzod. Uh, see, I probably should be thinking tactics, but also there's a ball over there and I want it. Do um, it. So I'm, yeah, I'm just going to run for it. Now, how much... And I can see someone measuring. <laughs> uh, what's my uh, ground speed again? Should be 30. Uh, probably 30 feet. 30. Yeah. yeah, it is 30. So, let's see... So, what is that? I can't see. That's it's too 30, small. That's, that's 35. A, so 35, if I, get to yeah. the, if I get to the spot just before it, does that mean it's at my feet or do I have to be in the square that it's in? Uh, you would have to be in the same square, I'm afraid. You're just too far uh, away. Okay. So, you could either double move and pick it up. Yeah, um, look, I might do. There's yeah. nothing else that I would want be wanting to do over there anyway. Um, if it's the bonus action, could I double move and then, like, jump back? No, I'll just go to where it is. Um, well, what you could do is uh, move 35 feet, pick yeah, it up, and yeah. then use the rest of your movement, and that can be your turn. So you can move away oh, yeah. or charge well, forward, case, whatever. Yeah, um, where am I? I'm just trying to hold on to it, aren't I? There's no goalposts. Yep. Who, whichever team is holding it at the end of uh, a round of combat, right. they right. will earn a point. Okay. Well, in that case, yeah. So 35 to over there. Um, and I've forgotten how to pick Mozart up. Uh, help. <laughs> I switch the ruler to the little um like the little, yeah, you gotta pick a little person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there it is. I okay, I think, I think maybe. Yes. Okay. I'm over here. I have the ball. That was thirty five. Um, which gives me uh twenty five left. Twenty five left. Yeah. I mathematics. Yo, it's the other end of the day for me, and work with something. Um. So let's see. So from there, I'm just gonna just grab it. And there's twenty five. Is that twenty five? That's fifteen. It's 15, 20. I'm behind a column. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe, but I don't know if I can get over there. What you does can... that say? That says 25. Yep, you can yeah, just, just, just get there. That one. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm going to do that. And you'll cool. see as Morzod picks the ball up, Morzod now has a, 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 a bright glow. A bright... Oh, shiny. Um, uh, what's the colour? Yes, it's it's a reddish colour outline. Oh, sort of man. like a fairy, oh, no. like a fairy fire effect. Help, I've got PK Aura. They're going to come get me. So, uh, Vitericus, it is your turn. Because Grey Hood was the only one of the opposite team who rolled well on initiative. <laughs> Good. Um, so, I am going to lock eyes with no one uh, and call out loud enough for the crowd around me to hear, since I don't know Thaumaturgy and I can't make the whole arena here. Uh, but I'm going to call out, Many of the souls that have been sent to me speak highly of no one. Uh, and all of the various ways that he has sent them to me. Surely, you should not be fighting with the mortals against me. Not when there are souls that are so, and I'm going to look over at Loverboy, young and, over to Greyhood, exotic for you to send my way. It's a lot uh, to say in six to... seconds, by the it way. Is, it is. I'm going to burn and, well, I'm a bard, it's what I do. Uh, I'm going to board, uh, burn a bardic inspiration on unsettling words. Which you remove... heard Watsky rap? It's kind of like that. <laughs> Which will remove a d8 from his next uh, check that he's got to make. Wow. And I'm going to cast Enemies Abound on him. Okay. So what does he need to do for Enemies uh, Abound? That is an intelligence saving check. Oh, dear. Minus eight. Okay. Oh, wow. You rolled the d8 and got an eight. I did. Okay. Well, uh, he has minus four. As his total <laughs> on, on that save, because he rolled Perfect. very po poorly. So, uh, on a failed save, the target loses the ability to distinguish friend from foe, regarding all creatures it can see as enemies until the spell ends. Each time the target takes damage, it can repeat the saving throw, ending the effect on a success. Whenever the affected creature chooses another creature as a target, it must choose the target at random from among the creatures it can see in range. Uh, if an enemy provokes an opportunity attack, it has to take the attack. Okay. Well, uh, and then good, go great. That that's <laughs> well done, Vitericus. That's a GM noise. I like that noise, but it's not. That, that's that's going to incur revenge. I'm sure of it. It is. I have no doubt. Uh, How and could then... he possibly incur more? 
<laughs> right? Yeah, well, yes. Uh, GM revenge, though, not just dice revenge. Hey, at least my dice are back. That's good. Uh, why would you say that? <laughs> well, yes, good point. But here we are. Um, cool. Well, that's my turn. Okay, Dagmar. Yeah, okay, so just assume that the whole time anything has been happening, Dagmar has been shrieking encouragement and directions at everyone else. Yep. Um, all right, so she is going to run. Uh, over here, because, you know, small feet, very slow. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to aim... Motherfucker. <laughs> I just I mean, you could... myself out of range of everybody. You could move back, I'm sure. She's taking her hand off the chest piece. Feet. No, you're We've fine. We've chosen but... Loverboy. We're aiming at Loverboy. Yeah, and the minimum range on your Ark of the Elements is 80 feet. Oh, it's 80. Yes. Yeah. Oh, bam. Ooh. There you go. Anybody so you want. you can shoot oh. anyone. Look, I'm going to go for Loverboy. <laughs> Um, Good choice. I'm going to disappoint him. I'm going to draw my bow, shout, leave naught, and turn it to acid damage. And I'm going to shriek, eat acid, lover boy. Not the face. Yeah. We're <laughs> aiming the full oh, face. No, I feel bad for if him. If you hit him, he's going to be like the guy at the end of Robocop. Oh, I'm really God. hoping I roll well, because otherwise it's going to be really embarrassing. <laughs> And there's only a nine, so fuck. Uh, <laughs> no, that misses. Uh, this, uh, yeah, green, dark green goop just flies through the air and fizzles into the, the sand and dirt at Loverboy's feet. Uh, anything else, Dagmar? Would you like to take a bonus action? Next one's in your face. Yeah, look, I think I'm going to start screaming in a... Dwarfish and raise several middle fingers in his direction. Okay. What's his, what's his big dwarfish? I don't think he's impressed. Screaming. Excellent. Yeah. Screaming in dwarfish is a free action. Excellent. Um. Yeah. I have nothing I can do with my bonus. So. Okay. If dwarfish sounds a bit like German or something. You could you could make that an aggressive action. I'm sure. Well, <laughs> it's no one's turn, which uh, is yeah. most in, most inconvenient for me. <sighs> Okay, so no one is going to... I'm going to just roll randomly to see which of his allies he attacks. It's going to be Loverboy. <laughs> Bad day incoming. Okay. <laughs> uh, so that is just going to be a straight-up Polax swipe. So he's That's got this life. huge... Um, you know, a pole arm with a blade and a, a small hammer spike coming out the other side. Um, and he swings, but only rolls a nine and misses Loverboy to my delight. And Loverboy's um, surprise and uh, you know, just turns with this, what the? Yeah. No one, this is not the plan. Um. And I think that has to be no one's entire turn. He's not going to move anywhere. He's right next to a foe he needs to fight, as far as he is concerned. Uh, ankle Slicer is uh, sees what's going on with no one and is going to take a, bon take a bonus action to disengage. Um, and therefore does not provoke an attack of opportunity. And is going to move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, which is her total movement speed. And okay. Nope, nope, nope. It's not going to do that. Ah, but is going to cast nope nope i do not like any of these options <laughs> okay he's going to try them, Sam, I am. he's going to try something rather silly he's going to try to charm person on no one 
So no one has to roll a wisdom saving throw. That's an 11, which fails. So Ankle Slicer succeeds. So I'm going to rule that the charm person is going to override uh, the enemies abound. So because no one is currently fighting his friends, does he get advantage on his charm person? Because that's how charm person works. You get advantage if there are people fighting you and they're the ones casting charm person. Hmm. You know what? That's fair. Yep. Another roll. So glad that you all know all these rules. Just because I have the same spell. Oh, cool. Well, that's a natural one from no one. Okay. Well, that's fine. So no one regards Ankle Slicer as a friendly acquaintance. Yeah, but none of the others so far. But even okay. so, um, that is Ankle Slicer is feeling a bit more comfortable about that. Literally no one's only friend in the arena at the moment because we're yep. all still enemies too. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And that is the end of Ankle Slice's turn. Uh, Loverboy is going to swear um, at being, swear loudly in Elven, or see, you don't understand it, at being the only one left standing toe to toe with a rather angry looking half orc with a huge weapon. Uh, and is going to all right yeah yep uh cast a spell um and become invisible Ooh, fun and they are then going to do something uh, 5, 10, 15. Well, I should move my cursor all over the arena so you've no idea where the, <laughs> where the token's going. Uh, and now I think no one should get an attack of opportunity with disadvantage because they definitely would have understood that yeah. Loverboy was... Any, any negatives to Loverboy for being in combat when he casts? Uh, no. Okay, cool. Someone took the right feet then. So with disadvantage, that's an 11 to hit L Loverboy, which misses. Okay, that is Loverboy's turn. Well done, Doug. You've basically burnt up an entire, you know, three characters worth of uh, actions. <laughs> that was beautiful. Yep. Well Bard. done. Yeah, bards are good. Well, good bards are good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, back to the top of the... T turn and the god touched um get a point there's um a yep there's a ding uh, as someone rings a bell and you can see someone on the southern end over the standing over the gate that you walked in uh now holds up a sign saying one to indicate that your team has one point how big was the ball again uh juggling oh. ball size I don't know, I've seen people juggle some interesting things, but I'm going to guess, yeah, quite that palm size. Yeah, you can easily palm it. Okay. So, back to the top, it is Grey Hood's time. Uh, so, 10 feet of movement to get up the ladder. 15, 25, 30. And they are now crouching behind the crenellated wall that's made of this earth that was just uh, sculpted by the druids before the battle began so they have cover um and their priority is to shoot the guy with the ball uh however morzod is has half cover which i'll just double check i think that's plus two to your armor class yeah. Okay. So, Grey Hood is taking the shot. No. First of all, Grey Hood is going to again whisper something to the bow, and uh, again the arrow that they have just knocked uh, starts to glow. And whoop! Wrong roll. 
and they take the shot, and oof, a 13 doesn't hit Morzod, does it? It bounces off my pecs. Uh, um, <laughs> my pot lid. Well, I mean, fair. technically, so when it hits it, <laughs> when the arrow hits a creature but no that's not what you that's not what you meant when you said it bounces off you no. so it actually crashes that the arrow crashes into the column and there is another burst of energy as force goes out you can see dust and, and sand is sort of uh, blown up into the air as a result of this arcane arrow but uh, morzod takes no damage but uh, they do get they do have a multi attack so they're going to take a second shot at Morzod with just a regular arrow. That's more like it. It's a 21 hit. Oh, it does. It, it does. Even with your plus 2. Uh from cover. Uh, it just hits me with the plus 2. I've got 18. Okay. Ooh, that is close. Yeah. Okay, so you take ooh, 10 points of piercing damage, Morzod. Ow. And the ball that you are gripping firmly in your hand actually jumps out of your hand. like um, It's like it actually displaces uh, a foot to the side and you are no longer holding it. And it then li- flies through the air towards Grey Hood. And there's actually it actually leaves a, a stream of a glowing trail behind it as it flies. Um, Not fast enough for Morzod to react. Um, But it is just a and Grey Hood has an opportunity to catch it because yeah, Grey Hood can use their reaction to catch it with a Yeah, with a acrobatics roll. So when you said not fast enough for him to react, you meant not slow enough for him to react. That's what I meant. Yeah, right. thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, Greyhood fails on the acrobatics, so it does Ooh. not does not catch the ball as it flies through the air. Uh, Being him in the face. But I am going to now rule roll. roll uh, D8, just to work out where it does land. Uh, so it doesn't land on the platform. It actually ends up uh, here on the ground in front of the platform. Um, so that is Grey Hood's turn. Uh, it is now Morzod's turn. Getting that thing back. <laughs> yes. Our quarter back. Yeah, absolutely. So that's 20. So I actually, is it, is, uh, what was it? Was it an action to pick it up or a bonus action? Bonus action if you're standing over it. Oh, I want to punch him first. <laughs> I'm uh, so tempted. I can grab the ball if you want to just go up and punch Grey Hood. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do that. What would Morzod do? Yeah, I mean, well... <laughs> This is, this is a strange new game, because he's not used to wanting also to get a thing. But, um, oh. yeah, there's a guy to punch there, and that's that's certainly well within uh, what he knows how to do. So, so uh, problem, it's going to take more than your uot uh, more than oh, 30 feet to get yeah, up there. Yeah, because yeah, okay. it takes 10 how feet to... How lo- work exactly? It takes um, 10 feet oh, to climb the ladder. Yeah. Okay. Um, might do... Let me just quickly glance at... Spells. And don't forget, you have like your spiritual weapon and stuff too. You can kind of go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, how many rounds is this whole thing, by the way? Until one team reaches ten points, ten. or okay, one team so is the last team standing. Possibly ten, or all dead. See, that's a long time, a long ass time. Um, spiritual folding chair does last for a while, though. I think Bruin Luck would like to be in this situation. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Jory's in the crowd. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, man, with his uh, white Russian and everything. Um, uh, yeah, look, I, I think I will. I'll, I'll. Now, if he's up on the pet, up on the thing up there, is there any like configuration where there's cover from him? Like, because 
would he be able to see down 10 feet from there to shoot? Like, I, I feel yeah, like... Yeah, where you are at the moment, you you feel quite well covered. Um, yeah, okay. Unless he moves, well, unless Greyhood moves. Hmm. All right, well, I'm going to I'm gonna skid into cover there and then I'm going to start into the spiritual folding chair. Um, so my turn uh, is, is taken up with that because it's an action for the first one. Okay, where do you want the spiritual folding chair? Oh, I'm just going to manifest it right in front of what's his face. <laughs> Great fella. Okay, you should be able to move it yourself. I believe I've given you permission. Okay. Yes, yes. Excellent. Great, there we go. A wild chair approaches. <laughs> Okay. Uh, anything else? I think that's. I think that's all I got. Cause yeah, because it's. Listen, move. I mo moved and did an action. Yeah. And the only thing I got left is bonus action, but I'm not near the wall to pick it up. So. Cool. Okay. I believe it is Viterica's next. Yeah. No, Orsi. Uh, yeah. Orsi. Orsi. Uh, don't know where that little wizard went. We do have okay. guiding bolt, but I have to see him to do that, don't I? Yes, mm. you do. Uh. This is more of a fairy fire situation. Uh. Um, if we let him get the ball, we'll be able to see him. Understood. Okay. Or so he's going to uh, Dagmar's still next to him. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, he's going to pluck an eyelash out of uh, Dagmar's eyelash. <laughs> Whoa. And... Smoosh it with some gum. Sorry, just stay still for a second. I'm going to rip one out. <laughs> Tweezers, just hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, rub it together with some gum Arabic and smear it on her and cast invisibility on Dagmar. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Get some good shots. <laughs> this is the best day of my life. And that's it. He's going to say where he is. Okay. How Not can... yet, but Dagmar is fully doing a... Can she see herself? Or is this like a full... I mean, I if, you're invisible, if you're invisible and light's passing through you, you should technically be blind, but... um, That's, that's real physics. I think, Dagmar, you can sort of see just a soft outline of yourself. Otherwise, it would actually become hard to, you know, handle your bow and so forth. So you're still... You, you're still fully aware of where your body parts are and everything that you're doing. You got this little but dotted line around you. You are also quite aware now that you are suddenly, uh, basically impossible to see. Fucking wicked. Uh, anything else for Orsi? He pats her on the back and then he's going to go back to being behind a pillar. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, Orsi just touched me. Mm. Don't read bump at character development. Hey. Uh, Vitericus. Yes. Um, ooh, I'm going to have to use my bonus action to pick up the ball. That's a shame. But I'll use my bonus action to pick up the ball. Uh, and then I'm going to call out across the arena, Oh, lover boy, come <laughs> out to play. Yay. <laughs> and I'm going to cast dissonant whispers at him. Uh-huh. Uh, I this, don't need line of sight. This has worked well for you before. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's a wisdom save. Oh yeah, that uh, other guy was And I'm casting too. it at yeah. second level. And so we put him in a necklace. Level. Look how it turned out for him. <laughs> Ripperoni. Well, that's a natural one from Loverboy. Yeah. Uh, in which case, Suck then it, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> he takes uh, thirteen points of damage. He also has to make a concentration saving throw on that invisibility. And he has to move as fast as possible away from me. And if he doesn't have Warcaster, then... Mm. Okay, concentration saving throw. That's a failure. What a great spell. So you suddenly mm -hmm. see Loverboy appear. And no, one's, no one sees Loverboy appear also. Oh dear. <laughs> Fuck him up. And <laughs> Loverboy has to use his reaction to run away. Is that right? I seem to remember that mm -hmm. from the spell. Yes, must use its reaction if possible to move its speed away from me. Okay. I can't move much further, but is basically now right against the wall. Uh, and you can you can see, um, you know, this, this you know, a ridiculously handsome Orlando Bloom, but prettier 
um, you know, golden haired elf uh, is suddenly looking a little panicked and he's actually back up against the wall, looking around, hoping for uh, a way to get away from this uh, absolutely terrifying bard. Train train. <laughs> not, to, not to mention the genuinely scary half-orc. <laughs> Anything else for Tericus? Um, can I get underneath the platform that um, Grey Hood's sitting on? Or is that like lattice work and stuff underneath that I can't... Uh, it is uh, just supported by wooden... Um, Supports. Beams. It's it beams, yeah. Uh, so you can get under there, yes. Okay. Um, so could I duck in behind the... Is, do the crenellations go all the way down, or are they only up on the... The crenellations go all the way to the ground, yes. Perfect. I'm going to hide underneath Greyhood. <laughs> cool. Thanks for making it complicated. My pleasure. I'm going to sit here, <laughs> but I'm on the other side. Uh, and I'll take the ball with me too, but that's okay. That can just... Okay. Beep boop. Okay, uh, Dagmar, what do you do? Invisible uh, Dagmar. Invisible Dagmar is going to go up here, and because I have the athlete feet, climbing doesn't cost me extra. Oh. Yep. <laughs> so we're going to go up here. Doop, doop, doop. And we are going to aim a shot at Loverboy. Okay. Ooh, that is my dinner arriving. I had to get that later, though. Uh, well, it's a little while until your turn, Cindy, so if you need to rush out and grab it. <laughs> Dinner is uh, important. We want a well-fed orc. Yes. Dinner, yes. Um, yeah, okay. I got Dolmatis out there. Uh, 25 points of... Yes. Well, yeah. well, 25 to hit, that definitely hits. <laughs> yeah. So he is going to hear on the wind a whisper of, Who's tacky now, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> and he is going to take... 18 points of damage. Ow. Whoa. That's a lot for a squishy. Region. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and this time the acid, uh, it does actually splash onto the side of his face. Uh, and so Loverboy uh, is now genuinely screaming, No, my face! My face! Now you can't see it, but Dagmar is doing like that coach Olympics thing where she is just grinding on that partition. Uh, I should have said that you get adv you got advantage on that shot because you oh, were so invisible. invisible. Uh, so just oh, roll again, just in case you get uh, a natural twenty. Oh, okay. Also, also sneak attack too, right? Because yep. she's either so way. Yeah, so I didn't get a natural twenty. That okay. was a sixteen. But with my with my sneak attack damage, <laughs> we will add an extra. Eight to that point of <laughs> total. Yeah, he's not looking happy. He's still up, lover boy, but he he is you know basically cl you know back against the wall. He's sort of down on the ground and flailing, going no. Ah! Oh, I feel bad for him. Poor face. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> not the face, man. You know, remind you, he called you discount him. Now, yeah. uh, April, the invisibility spell, does it yes. make, um, does Dagmar become visible now, having no, made an attack? No, it's all on me. Oh, ooh, maybe. Ba, 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 ba. Sorry, I usually cast it on myself. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, attacks or casts a spell, she's visible now. Okay, so Dagmar, you are now visible. Worth it, but I am also behind cover. Is there anything in that chest? Should I? Is that a? <laughs> it's... Gonna loot that. Gonna loot that chest. It's probably something in there. Um, but you've used your uh, action. Uh, no, it would be a bonus action to open the chest. I'll say you're close enough that you can quickly do that if you want to. I want to look in it. Okay. Now, r can you please roll a d20 for me? This will determine what's in there. Surprise! It's a mimic. 19. Oh, okay. Oh, good grief. Okay. Uh, Give me something good. <laughs> you see a uh, marble, um, sort of a large mar marble. Uh, it is glowing with a warm green light. And you have, uh, as soon as you see it, you have an instinctive, uh, intuitive feeling that uh, it's going to help you 
It's going to help people. Uh, basically, you throw it, and the people around where it lands will be killed. Ooh, she got a power up. Oh man, a healing grenade that takes me back. Noise. I'm gonna put that in my little pocket. Okay, do, 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 do. agenda. Deep cuts. <laughs> okay, it is no one's turn. Uh, does no All one? Right, well then. Does no one? Uh, still affected. Uh, does no one get to save against dissonant whispers on their turn? Uh, he no on, one against, gets to save against uh, dissonant whispers. So he gets to save against enemies abound when he takes damage. Ah, okay. So, um, otherwise, what's the duration? Uh, the duration is... It's like 20 hours or some shit. It's, yeah, it's not insignificant. Uh, concentration up to a minute. Okay. Well, no one. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Oh, I wanted to finish him off. Um, yeah. No one is char yeah, charges towards lover boy. Right, this will hurt him more. It's true. Emotionally. <laughs> Betrayal is important. Mm -hmm. Physical scars heal, emotional ones. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's for life. Mm -hmm. Trauma. See, we inflict trauma. That's what I said. And well, yeah, team, <laughs> team shared trauma, you're right. With a, have yep. team trauma. With a, sharing it. With a 15, the Polax comes right down on Loverboy, uh, Loverboy's chest for eight points of damage, and Loverboy and Loverboy, who's been screaming so, oh, and slumps back against the wall, and silent, and is now uh, unconscious and bleeding out. Fabulous. No, oh, he's a baby. This is how babies learn. Uh, this is how babies who talk trash learn. Uh -huh. And I like him. The crowd just goes wild. Uh, you know, it's raw, yeah, roaring and, and screaming, and this is you know stunning stuff. Um, ankle slicer. Uh, I was just gonna say, look, are you? Big idiot, get out of it! Yeah, snap out of it! It's gonna go up and it's going to take. Uh... Yep. Uh, sh uh, going to use one of her short swords to attack with a 10 that misses no one. It's gonna use a bonus action uh, to use her offhand short sword for another attack. With a 15, that does hit no one. So, no one... Yeah, look, I'm just playing D&D &D with myself today. So... Yeah. <laughs> uh, or, wait a minute, that's the wrong role. Um, because she's a gnome and he is a medium-sized creature. Okay, so that is 8 plus 2. So, no one takes 8 points of piercing damage. And now they make another save? Uh, yes, another intelligence saving throw to shake off enemies abound, but Charm Person automatically ends because she hit him. Uh, yes. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> she charmed him, so yes, he would have attacked Lover Boy. Uh. Okay, intelligence save from no one. Yes, please. 14? Is exactly my intelligence, uh, is my, my save DC. Uh, okay, so he, he succeeds and is no longer affected by enemies abound. He looks down at the unconscious body of Loverboy and then turns around and glares at you, Viterricus, and just says, <laughs> You're next. Ooh, run, boy. I'm struggling to to take no one as being scary because when you described him, I immediately imagined him as Mr. Face. And anyone who's watching, definitely enjoy looking that up. Um, okay. It's very silly. <laughs> I just imagined him as a really big half-orc. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 
Okay, lover boy is going to make a death saving throw. Boom, boom, boom. Maddie one. Maddie one. Hang in there, baby. It's a two, so it's a failure, hey. but only one failure. <laughs> Not a one though. It must okay, be. He's got two more. What's an easy way to remember? Okay, I'll just put that there. All right, that is Lover Boy's turn. Uh, Grey Hood um, is all alone and becoming increasingly surrounded by bad guys. And a chair. <laughs> and is going to. Okay, uh, Grey Hood is going to open up the chest the chest because they are also curious about what's in there. I will roll a d20 to see what's in there. Okay, I think. <laughs> okay. Um, Grey Hood pulls out a marble of their own, um, which only Orsi could possibly see what uh, Grey Hood is doing at this point. Um, Dagmar, you might be able to make out, but it make it up, but it's all happening behind the crenellations. Um, so Grey Hood uh, basically stands up and then lobs this marble uh, at the ground. It lands next to Orsi. No. And I need to do no? I need to do a quick roll. How does he throw it that far with just his arm? Does this guy have cannons instead of guns? Um have you thrown a marble? That can go a long way. I I throw terribly. <laughs> Did you do a lot of bouncing and rolling? So okay. To an arrow. <laughs> this is where things start to get weird. <laughs> you better not polymorph me. I'm gonna be real angry. Team you. The Ooh. ah, that's a frog. <laughs> the marble turns <laughs> into a giant frog, what? which spawns right next to you, Orsi, um, and. Uh, you immediately, uh, you all immediately get a sense of this is not a living creature that's been, you know, captured or anything. It is simply a simulacrum of a giant frog, but it will do everything that a giant frog does. Uh, so I'm now. I like to sit outside my window and make loud noises when I'm trying to sleep. So it is now in combat, um, but it doesn't get a turn. A uh, turn on. Yeah, its initiative is low, but uh, yeah, but it will get to go on this turn because we're at the top. Okay. Um, does Grey Hood get to do anything else? Nope, that's Grey Hood's entire turn. But there's now a giant frog on the field, so oh. that's different. Uh, also, we got a point. Oh, yeah, we won a point. Say. Yep, Woo! another point. Ding, ding. Uh, uh, the sign holder takes down the one and a two comes up. And the crowd, like you know, it's another minotaur in like a bikini. <laughs> <laughs> um, not enough minotaurs for that to work, but we'll make it a furball. Oh, yes, yeah, uh, a furball in a bikini. Furball in a bikini. Bikini furball. Bikinis are canon in this DD world. Uh, okay. So next it is Morzod or Orsi. Who wants to go first? Orsi, do you want go to ahead, go, go ahead. I'm thinking. All right, well, in that case, I'm going to belt the guy with my chair. Uh, uh, although, moving the chair actually counts as my bonus action, so I'm also going to climb up there and punch him myself. <laughs> uh, so, up 10 feet and then across. Uh, well, I've got 20, which is more than enough to get to where he is. Um, so, I'm just going to pop myself cool. there. Can I, can I be in the square, the same square as the chest? Now that the chest yeah, is yeah, that's fine. Probably phased out of existence nope, the chest open. is still there, and in fact, as you climb up, uh, you see uh, a new glow appear in the chest uh, as if something else has spawned inside there. Oh, cool. It's a drop point. Anyway, but I'm going to um, take a swing at our grey cloak fella mm -hmm. with my trusty uh, skillet, war skillet. Um, and because I do have, do, do I have my pot lid on? Hang on a minute. Yeah, you do. I do? I do. Okay. Well, um, when you drew yourself with it, I assume you. I, look, I, yeah, I'm just, pretty. 
if you have any armor stuff, like make sure it's ticked as on in yeah. your like inventory it's, section. I'm just trying Otherwise, to find you where won't the inventory section is. Uh... So it's next to spells yes, I do, inventory. I do have it yeah, I thought yeah. I did, but I, I just thought I'd better. His better. armor class is eighteen, so I'd like. Yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd yeah. hope. Yeah. I'd one hope it's. Hope. Yeah. One would hope that I have that equipped. Otherwise, my pecs are seriously. Uh, so, uh, crap. So roll a hit. Where was which button? That's that one. I think a twenty should hit him. Uh, a twenty does hit. Okay, let's roll for damage. All right, that's six. Okay. Yep. So, um, Mozart is absolutely having the time of his life. He is <laughs> roaring and laughing, <laughs> same breath. You know, big overhead swing on this thing to belt the guy. Um. So, and it, and it makes the satisfying spring noise yes it does uh, because it's because it's a skillet um and so i'm also gonna hit him with the chair um so the chair rolls to hit as well i think does it is that how it works uh you can move the weapon up to 20 feet and repeat the attack against does it have to roll to hit i think it must do if it's making it, an attack i think so yeah, yeah i think it is okay all right so we'll roll to hit the chair beat me and got 24. Wow. <laughs> so that definitely hits him. Uh, and the chair rolls a tasty seven damage. Well done. Yep, so like Morzord on one side and then as the dude kind of yep. staggers back, the chair from the other side. Kapow. So basically what... I mean, what what happens is Greyhood reaches into the chest, pulls out this marble, throws it down, and then immediately thwack on the back, and then thwack on the side, and you just hear this sort of muffled, mm! like, you know, "Are you kidding me?" Crunch. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Uh, anything else for Morzod? No, no, just just laughing. Cool, Aussie. <laughs> You big as a hadrosaur compared to a frog. <laughs> um, Questions that get asked in our game. Compared to a regular frog or a it's giant frog? To a, giant fr a giant frog, specifically. Well, uh, I think they're both large creatures. Okay. I choose you. That's my new command word, I choose you. <laughs> Um, so it's an action to speak the command word. So would you say it would be a bonus action to throw it? Uh, yes. No, I think, actually, I think it's an action to throw and speak the command word. Basically, oh, it's, so an, it's, like yeah, a, it's an it's action to activate it. Yep. Okay. What? Could, could I put it in its mouth? Would that be a bad idea? <laughs> no, do it. <laughs> <laughs> you are so protective of this Matavarosaurus. The Matavarosaurus I mean, it's not, would be fine. It's not they're real. Strong, they're made of strongest yeah. than frogs. I want an I alien. I want to see Fro an alien. Scene. Frogs are all mushy. Um, okay, well, give... to be theatrical. Look, give me yeah, okay. a, a dexterity ability check to throw it okay. into the mouth of if the I giant to, frog. If I I will also, like, shove, also will shove his hand into its mouth if he has to. <laughs> A dexterity check, you said? Yes, please. Dex. My dex is good. 18! 18. 18. <laughs> yeah, that's good enough. So, this frog just... Take whoop, it out. Whoops up, you know, And then... Whoop, and then... I choose you! <laughs> this <laughs> giant frog now has uh, this... Just uh, sort of the the head, the, the neck of this mud of Barosaurus looking out at you, Orsi, looking extremely confused. And this giant frog just going... Oh, my God. Did it expand? <laughs> did it stretch around it? <laughs> it's, yeah, frog. it's, you know, the, the big sort of bulging throat is now just full of mud of Barosaurus. <laughs> Um, that'll keep him busy. Yeah, I I, I will <laughs> say, uh, also if you want to move, uh, there's a good chance you think that the frog's not going to take a. Uh, it might be a bit distracted at the at the moment, so you might be able to get away without provoking an attack of opportunity. 
Alrighty, I'll do that. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Yeah, there. Sorry! That's his turn. <laughs> okay. Uh, next we have Vetericus. Yes, and I'm technically underneath Grey Hood, so I'm going to bounce out to here, let's say. I'm going to stand on the edge of the water. Uh, I'm going to call out to no one. I like her. She has spunk. Bring me her next. Uh, and I'm going to enemies abound again, because I still have a third level spell slot. Oh, good grief. Um, and I'm going to burn another bardic on unsettling words. So we will go enemies abound, and you can subtract... Eight again from your roll, please. Are you kidding me? Whoa, nope. he did roll another eight. Oh, damn. Mm -hmm. Making up for those ones. Nope. I know, right? It's a 15 minus eight. So it's Rick. seven. Seven. He's been saving them up from the last three episodes. So Clearly. <laughs> you know what's important? Sports. Yeah, that's right. It's the, it's the real hero here. Backbone um, of the nation. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm going to duck back behind the crenellations again. And just have a grand old time uh, okay. with, my, with my hacky sack of destiny. So, that is Vitericus' turn. Dagmar, how are you going to ruin your DM's day? <laughs> and Dagmar is just cackling at everything that's happening. <laughs> and while she is cackling, she is going to aim at an uh, ankle slicer. Okay. Uh, you get adv uh, advantage... Advantage because you're high enough to. She has the high ground, Anakin. Yeah, they have the high ground. I am. Which means get this is this is not an official D and D rule, but I, I'm saying that you're, uh, you're in a good enough position that you get advantage. Oh, so twenty two. That hits. To attack. And then I get sneak I get sneak attack, so I have advantage. Yes, you do. And don't forget, uh, you can also like bonus action hide as well if you want. The Sephiroth. Yeah. Okay, so eight plus twelve That's in damage. Dumbass. Ow. Nice. Um Okay. Just so. assume I I'm gonna shout something in dwarvish while I do that because I've run out of insults, but I want it to sound really bad. <laughs> what do Today you say? Today is like? a good day for someone else to die. Yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> Probably just going to shriek a string of obscenities. Okay. So Ang Ankle Slicer, having just attacked an ally to get him out of Vitericus's control, uh, just as she sees the flame of uh, anger return to no one's eyes uh, and you know her face drops in fear and then an arrow hits her in the back and uh, she just you know, arrow. yells out are you fucking kidding me <laughs> <laughs> it's okay very, it's very rewarding that this is Australia so we can have people just completely have fun <laughs> uh, is my chest glowing as well Sorry, like, what? Has yeah. it regenerated? Yeah, yeah. My... Underneath, underneath the studded armor, you're just. <laughs> no, not my bosom. Um, right. Has my chest behind me, has that also got a new glow about it? Yes, there is a glow in there. There might be something I'm else. Got... I'm going to oh, use man. my bonus action to open it again. Okay. It's glow. Give me a 1d20, <laughs> please. Uh... Get another Pokemon. Oh, no, it's a one. Okay. Ooh, it's, um, this explode. <laughs> it's another marble. Um, You're rolling on a table. This one has a strange uh, mirror-like quality to it. You look at it and you can only God. just see your reflection. And reflection? you know it's going to summon something, but you're not entirely oh, sure what. <laughs> oh, man. Does it only summon something if I throw it? Uh, yes, it's an action to throw it. Does and she you. have an idea of? Does she have an idea of whether it's going to be friendly or to, like, is it is it going to be something that if she throws it at her feet, will she hurt she hurt herself or like, does she know who she's supposed to throw it at? That's unclear. Except that okay. it will summon something that will fight. It's right. un okay. it's unclear right. who it will fight. fight. Okay. It's unclear who yep. it will fight. 
okay. gonna put that in okay. the pocket for now. Okay. Uh, right. Well, it is now the giant frog's turn, who is just going to use their action to spit out the Matabarasaurus. Children, hide your eyes. So there is now a very confused Matabarasaurus in the field. Um, and I will add them to... Oh, hey, there she is! I thought we named her. Throw we away. Did. No, we did. We did. We named Throw her. away. Yep. Throw right. away. That's it. Uh, so they are not a combat... You know, they are not a fighting mount, but uh, they are in initiative anyway. Um, I used her for her yeah, intended purpose. <laughs> Always has been used as a distraction in fight. D and D players. And now I need to. Did the frog take any bludgeoning damage from having a dinosaur in its mouth? I mean, I feel I thought the frog was just going to rupture. Honestly, I thought it was going to explode. Having, well, like, its stomach capacity would be smaller than its entire form, and if they were the same size, then putting something the size of it inside it should have. They do have the swallow ability, uh, so they uh, wouldn't be able to. Uh, the, while the Mutterborosaurus is too large to swallow entirely, my thinking was it could probably fit some of it in. It's, you know, giant frogs are, uh, and it was just in its mouth. It's not like it went down into its gullet. Okay, all right, all right. Um, I suppose it had a throat pouch going on. Um, but what is it going to do? With its thirty, to speak to its manager. With its thirty, uh, no, I think it's just going to stay where it is because it's used its action, um, and it <laughs> and it laments getting out of bed in the morning. <laughs> it thinks the Mudderbarosaurus is an enemy, so it wants to attack it. So it's not going to move away, and that is the giant frog's turn. Very throw away. No one. This is where everything gets a little tragic. No one is going to. Uh, actually, I'm going to roll to see if no one attacks Ankle Slicer or the Downed Lover Boy. It's Ankle Slicer. That's rough. <laughs> oh heck, he could hit a guy when he's down. Yikes. Yep. Yeah, Had to kill him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm gonna kill. Ha. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, no one rolls a natural one on the oh. attack. <laughs> and uh, he hit himself in the yeah. face. Complete, in his confusion. completely misses and Polax just slams into the ground and you get yeah just the, the the rage the fury you can you can feel anger you can see the anger boiling up inside um and on that note it is ankle slice's turn who does not have many good options at the moment she have many H hp left that was a lot that she took. She's not well, um, but it's entirely possible that the healer of this party is already unconscious. <laughs> uh, Cast is first. An mm -hmm. Yep, Ankle Slice was going to try and stab, yeah, stab no one out of it again. <laughs> Uh, today's going well. So an 18. I'm wrestling themes. This is great. An 18 <laughs> hits. Oh, for nine points. Who's going to draw the bikini furbog, by the way? Whoop. Oh, my God. I love bikini furbog you're, so much. You're pretty, you're pretty good at the hot ones, so maybe maybe this one's... Uh... I'll do bikini you're furbog. I'll, I'll do anything. You're both good at drawing <laughs> oh, yeah. very attractive So that's another intelligence <laughs> save from no one? Thank you. It is on, on a 14 to break out of it. <laughs> I kind of want him to break out of it again. That's oh, so fun. No, not quite. Oh. Rolls a 13 total. So oh. uh, Ankle Slice is just going to use a bonus action to do it again. Uh, 24 is definitely going to hit. He's not going to have any like Achilles tendons left. Only four points of damage this time, and that's another intelligence save from no one. It is. It's enough. And another 13! Yes! Ah. S stupid orc. That's Sorry, half orc. So near. 
And that has to be Ankle Slice's turn because they've already, they can't disengage uh, because. Greyhood's the only one who's fighting us. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> he is fully flanked. Uh, Lover Boy. Another death save from Lover Boy is a natural one. Oh, buddy. Which is too sad. On your bike. Two fails. So, hit. You uh, get hit repeatedly in the face. So, Lover Boy <laughs> slumped against, and just as the la as a final death rattle is about to come out, uh, they just <laughs> disappear off the field. Into his own butthole. <laughs> um, and uh, you hear that the crowd goes wild. You know, ah! um, and varying, varying degrees of delight or um, horror. Yeah, I imagine. Uh, yeah, quite a bit. You, you, you can you can see um, that there are a number of young women in the crowd. You know, absolutely mortified. Um, there are a number of other young women who are laughing hysterically at this. <laughs> Um, so, uh, it is the Matabarasaurus's turn. Matabarasaurus is terribly confused and is just going to, uh, flee from the giant frog. Giant frog gets an attack of opportunity. Uh. I like this little kaiju battle that's going on. <laughs> I want to see what's in the other, uh, marble. I don't. Mm, okay, so it's plus three that's to fair. hit. Afraid to throw that one. <laughs> I'm scared. Strong vibe. It's just going to be me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to punch myself in the face. It's it's gonna, yeah. Yeah. Giant frog misses the Matabarasaurus, who just runs up to you, Orsi, and no. is, is <laughs> and is trying to be a mount, as it was always intended to be. <laughs> trying to climb under you. Yeah, get, no. get on bump, me. Bump. Get on no. me. Full <laughs> dog head in the lap. What the fuck? Okay. Clearly, you need to ride the Matabarasaurus and just like lightning everything. Yes. Did we just get another point? Did. Yep, another point. you just got another point. So the other team the isn't even boy. playing. So that is. <laughs> There's two teams the down there. And I'm just playing cricket. That is three <laughs> points uh, to the God Touched. Zero points to the. What did I call them? The Free Fighters. <laughs> yeah, Who, totally again? Free. Who are now yeah, the Three the Fighters. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> okay. Well, it is Grey Hood's turn. And he cries. What's Grey Hood gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> we can't get too cocky because the Blimp Taris hasn't come into play. Yeah, yet. that's true. Maybe true. that's what's in the pearl. Grey Hood. Is going to. Yeah. Greyhood is going to risk a point blank shot at Morzod. Ooh. Um, doesn't have the point blank feet, sadly. So this is with disadvantage. Yep. There's two massive pecs in his vision. <laughs> He's like, ugh. Longbow's are big too. That's difficult. Yeah, does he have mm -hmm. elbow room to draw that? He's got the crenellations behind him. He's got Vinny on the other side. Oh wait, no, you're under it. I know, I'm underneath. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, because because I, I was thinking like he's just gonna pull his arm back and elbow you in the face. <laughs> and that's just a ten to hit, so that's not going to hit Morzod, is it? Nope. nope okay. Nope, so nope. it. I'm just gonna pat him on the head. Can so I, can I just grab the arrow? <laughs> Morzod doesn't take any damage, but um. As the arrow flies out of the bow, you can see this sort of dark shadow spiral around it. And there is now a... No, and it only affects you if it hits you. So, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't even create a fog cloud or anything. Um, you are fine. Um, but Greyhood is now uh, just going to move and... Risk the attack of opportunity if you want to take it. Alrighty, yeah, absolutely. How do I do that? Is it uh, just, just a, a normal attack? Just a melee, melee attack. Yeah. yeah. Melee weapon. Uh, okay. Um, melee attack. Yeah. Nah, that's a three. I missed him. Slippery bugger. Well, okay. Eight total. Uh, no yeah. Way. Eight definitely misses. 
Okay, Grey Horde is now has actually dived under um, the wooden platform and is now standing directly next to you, Vitericus. Um, and yeah. is actually at this point just yeah just drops the longbow and takes out a short sword. Uh, but that is their entire turn. Morzod. Shuffle away. Right, I'm getting down there with them. Okay. Absolutely. Still roaring with laughter. Uh, so I guess um, across and ten down and, and pop myself. Oh, you can to... just leap down if you want to. Yeah. I mean, if, I, I was worried that you'd make me roll for it. <laughs> I'm like, I'll take the ladder if he's going to GM me, but if I can be flashy, absolutely just going to leap down yep. there. Uh, no! So, um, yeah, and... Vitericus, you see Greyhood nimbly land in front of you and then duck <laughs> undercover and then <laughs> and just... Sand flies everywhere as Morzod follows. Yeah. Leaves a bit of a crater. <laughs> Alrighty, and do I do so that's my move. Now I'm gonna attack uh while roaring get back here. Oh, I don't think I hit him. No, it's twelve. But I'm also gonna bring the chair for my bonus action. Okay, twelve misses. <laughs> so chair also whooshes down because he's still in my line of sight, so I still got him. And the chair rolled a 16. Cool. And uh, can you grab and move the chair, please? Uh, yes, I'll move yep. the chair, yep. Uh, and okay. a 16 hits. Uh, okay, so Morzod lands, swipes for a miss, but while he's leaning down the chair over his head, <laughs> kapow. And um, let's see what damage we roll with the chair. That's an eight. Eight points? Yep. It all adds up. Just... Yep. Bonds him in the chin with that one. And, yeah, the Grey Hood uh, takes another whack from the spiritual folding chair, but is still looking in, you know, relatively healthy compared to... Well, certainly, the guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Aussie. Is it an action to get on the Mount of Buttersaurus? <laughs> Uh, the Mudabarasaurus wants you to ride it, so I'll say it's a bonus action to climb up. Unless he's going to get on and throw away. Okay, so we now have a wizard on the dino on a dinosaur, and yeah. wizards on the dinosaur. The crowd uh, has. I mean, as a team, you are encouraged to you know showmanship was encouraged, and I think the crowd is happy with what they're seeing. <laughs> if we could get like a Mudabarasaurus like Rio, that would be cool. Yeah. Uh, what's her I mean, what's her movement speed? Uh, give me probably real. <laughs> give me a animal handling. Uh, I'll, I'll make this free, but give me a animal handling as part of climbing Ooh. up onto it. He's pretty say, good at animal handling. She's, um, she's probably happy that you've mounted now, so I think I think a triumphant rear up would be well in handle. Ooh, I got a six. Like okay, uh, <laughs> you you do manage to climb up onto the Mudabarasaurus, but you and and you try and yeah, because you know, uh, it is actually saddled. Um, oh, do with something reins. cool, but she yeah. just stands there. <laughs> yeah, and, but there's there's no impressive rearing up and um, you know bellowing out to impress the crowd. Um, but you think they're probably impressed anyway. Very cool. What's her what's her movement speed? Uh good question. Oh my god, what's charge! It, is it, is it uh, the same as a horse? Uh, it is forty feet. Forty feet. Okay. Uh, Aussie will ride her. I'll, I'll say like here. Okay. In the middle. Uh, and then he is going to raise his left hand in the air and it's wet with rainwater and takes out a little bit of copper dust and smooshes it over and casts Gemdunen's ball lightning at Ankle Slicer and no one. Oh, that That's... is nasty. Well, it's a deck save, so I think Ankle Slicer is probably going to probably do okay on this. Uh, deck save of 14. Okay. Nope. But who knows? Ankle slay slicer fails. Oh. No one succeeds. No one succeeds, so he's in trouble too. <laughs> uh they're still gonna take damage though. So Yeah, half damage. Yeah. Oh, okay. A lot of sixes and some fives. Twenty seven. <laughs> Lightning damage. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um Slicer evaporate? Is that, a, is that a bonus action to evaporate? Angle Slicer uh, 
is having a very bad day um, and he's just struck by lightning in the back, you know, her whole body just arcs back and then uh, she collapses onto the ground and is now unconscious. And uh, I was gonna shriek encouragement at Orsi. So no one Orsi takes, takes his hood off and puts his arm up. Whoops. Yeah, I this pretty. <laughs> I'm so glad that Foundry lets you undo things like, you know, damage modifying and so forth, because I keep typing in the wrong numbers. Anyway, um, no one Connie. no one is looking unhappy uh, after he that. He can do his save, right? Because I've yep. him. That's another intelligence. Yeah. Oh, good grief. It right? was. <laughs> it's a two. Yeah. Which Teamwork. is a failure. No one left for him to attack. Now enough. the frog is the frog gonna, his enemy. Well, he's gonna butcher ankle slicer, right? Like. Oh yeah. Ooh. Um, oh, straight up, like murks these guys. Whoops. It is uh, Vitericus's turn. It is. Um, this is like Vitericus's best day ever because my usual plan of throw half orc at it, I can do it twice in a turn. It's great. <laughs> I'm having so much fun. Um, but I am going to. Burn my last bardic on some unsettling words and dissonant whisper at Greyhood at a second level. Oof. Okay. Uh, so kindly remove four from a wisdom saving throw. Oh, whoops. I rolled for the wrong character, which is a shame because it was a good roll. That is a natural 20, which is an even better roll. Uh, I think you pass. Um, yeah. So okay. even with a minus four, it's still 17. Uh, I did, however, roll 21 for the damage. So take 10. <sighs> 10 points, but they do not have to run away, correct? Run away, correct. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else for Tericus? Uh, okay, no, that was my you... bonus and my action, and I don't really want to trigger the opportunity attack, so I'll just stay put and um, be all flashy and stuff. Not that anyone can see me, because I'm behind a brick wall, but that's fine. That's over the other side can see it. Yeah, you can actually, uh, Vitericus, you can actually hear a little bit of booing coming from the stands behind you as people... I know, I know. Yeah. Uh, Dagmar, it is your turn. Where's the uh... magic big screen? Yeah. Right. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, like a bunch of pixies hanging under like little light crystals, furiously drawing pictures. <laughs> uh, well, if you listen carefully, you can actually hear um, the sounds of combat are being echoed slightly from uh, Arena Square outside. Uh, you think that it's being projected for those who weren't able to enter the arena. Oh. Um, I'm going to take a shot at a uh, no one. Oh my god, LCD screen. It's like actually liquid crystals. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, so I roll it a Panasonic? With... Oh, it's great. Mm, it's a Pixie Sonic. <laughs> that is a natural 20. Oh, good race. Oh, that's it. All right, this, this makes all of the sessions before this worthwhile, even the poster thing. Making up for the... uh horrible display against the goblins where I just ran around on top of a boat hitting nothing. Hey, you were pretty awesome in that one too, though. Uh, I a fish. didn't really achieve anything. Alright, so 12 and then plus my sneak attack. He takes 22 damage. Of acid damage, yes. Of acid damage. Oh god, listen yeah. to the end of Robocop, help me! So he's still standing, but this acid is, is splashing over his pecs and his you know, shoulders, oh, yeah. and uh, he to lose all his chest hair. He does get oh, no. to make another yes, intelligence save. Intelligence save. He rolls a six. So, <laughs> um, Love, hello, in fighter. It is the giant frog's turn. Uh, unless oh, uh, Dagmar, unless you have anything else you want to do. Um, I'm going to use a bonus action to hide behind my partition. Okay. And now the giant frog does not know where Dagmar is. So, hmm. Look, 
Look at that nice pool of water. If I was a giant frog. Bloop. Very refreshing. Mm, hydrated. Yep. Staying in my lane. <laughs> Moisturized. Uh, but it is actually going to try and bite Orsi, but I'm going to say with disadvantage because Orsi is riding a dinosaur. Mm. Get the door. Get on the floor. Fun sentence. Everybody ride the dinosaur. Well, rolled a two and a natural one. So, a giant frog fails pathetically to leap up and grab Orsi and at the end of the giant frog's turn they just poof vanish back into the magical ether that summoned them because uh, I rolled for the duration and it was only two two rounds and it is now no one's turn no one still believes that enemies abound uh, no longer knows where Dagmar is. He is intelligent enough to know that Ankle Slicer is no longer a threat. And so... Enemy, though. 10, oh my god, is it all going to fight a wizard riding a 15, dinosaur? 20, 25, <laughs> 30. Can't quite make it. Um, Let's go. Brian. Anything he can do to catch you. I don't think there is. Nope, it's just running up. It's going to go toe-to-toe with the dinosaur, with the wizard on the dinosaur, and the crowd is loving this, and they are chanting, No one! (laughs) No one! (laughs) B.S. I'm the one on the dinosaur. How dare they? Um, is, is, is there anyone squealing for us in the crowd? Uh, you are. Yeah, there is. There are. There is definitely. There are cheers all around. Every action is being. Um, uh, if any of you want to take a moment to sort of glance around the crowd, um, on your turn, I'll get you to make a perception roll. Um, well, when it comes around to me again, you boy. So that is no one's turn. Ankle slicer, death saving throw. Fail. That is one failure. And uh, Mataburosaurus is now controlled by Orsi, so it'll go on Orsi's turn. Uh, Grey Hood. Um, Kitty Fearbold, what's the score? (laughs) Yep. Ding. Four points to the god touched. Struts across the um, decking. Um, the head. You can see a, um, a bugbear at the other end of the arena over the other gate just sort of slumped on the chair, uh, sort of realising that, yeah, he's probably not going to get anything to do this match. Oh, buddy. Uh, Greyhood is going to... Yeah, they're a good sport. They are going to give attacks of opportunity to pretty much everyone (laughs) because they want to be visible. They at least want to be seen as part of the fight. Free showman. Love that. Yeah. Well, Viterikus rolled a natural 20. (sighs) Okay. You just like trip him as he tries to run past. You're like either like either side of the scale. No, You're either like so ones or twenties, yeah. He's using a high high variance dice. Hmm. For a grand total of ten damage. Okay, well, that's not so bad. No, I rolled a one and a seven. Yeah. So. Really? Yeah. Uh Morzot, are you taking a ta- an attack of opportunity? I absolutely am. Ah, I missed him though. It's a nine. Yeah, that's a miss. Yeah. He clearly got pushed out of the way when Viddy uh, got him. Okay, and from there, <laughs> Greyhood sees the wizard on the Matabarasaurus, and uh, the line of reasoning is, look, if you're going to shoot something. <laughs> you know that old saying. If you're going to shoot something, shoot the wizard on the back of the dinosaur. Yeah, my grandma always used to say that. Mm-hmm. Ugh, an 11 is not going to hit, is it? Nope. 
Nope. Arrow flies past. Uh, second arrow this time. Uh, Grey Hood uh, whispers something to the arrow. It takes on a glowing aura. Tries again. That's a hit. That's a 22. Uh -oh. I can't even see it. Wait, can I? 22? 15, 16, 17. No. no. Wow. Oh, so close. Okay. So close to shielding. So... You take nine points of piercing damage as the arrow hits you. That's a lot. And then you take, uh, then oh, you dude. and the Mudabarasaurus, and within ten feet, and no one, because why not, <laughs> take an extra nine points of force damage as this oh, arrow boy. flies out and then just... <laughs> That's more than half of my HP gone. I am like <laughs> not looking very good right now. And no one is still standing. So is the Matabarasaurus. <laughs> and that is the Grey Hood's turn. Morzod, you've just seen the Grey Hood run away. Back here, you slippery bugger. Uh he's got more ground speed than I do, but Oh, does he? No, it should be the same. 30 yeah, feet. Well, yep, I give chase. Not so fast, you slippery bugger. And I'm going to swing. Let's get him. Oh, no. <laughs> no. All right, so Mozart makes it over there, makes for a swing, but skids past, and the chair follows. Oh, it rolled on the edge there. It was going to be an 18. Two, so the chair also just uh, swings around cool. to nearby. Uh, please move the chair yes, on the map, please. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to just pop the chair there, I think. And that is Morzod's turn. It is Orsi and the dinosaur. Okay. Sorry, Storm Cell and the dinosaur. Supercell. 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 Storm of the Century. Yes. Thank you. Um, just reading one of my other lightning spells. Trigonometry. Um, because how high up am I on the back of Throwaway? Um, well, we'll say about six or seven feet. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just trying to decide what's better, a ball or a lightning bolt. Um, Originally, I was going to do lightning lure and, like, lasso no one and see if I could take him for a ride with the dinosaur, like, dragging him behind. But now that Grey Hood's there, I will do the same thing. I was just going to wet his fingertips with rainwater, copper dust down the fingers, and cast another Gemdemon's Link Ball Lightning, which I don't see having any trouble hitting. Yeah. No yeah. Okay, so are you going to... What's the radius on that? 20 feet. 20 feet radius. I'm just wondering. No, you can't You can't hit them both. You can, yeah, it has to be no one or Grey Hood. They're just out of range of each other. Oh, are they? Oh, hang on. 20 feet. That should be, that should be all right. No, yeah, yeah, you can get them both. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, I was completely wrong about that. Okay. Yeah, it's the radius, yeah. Yeah. So, um... That is a 14 deck save. Yeah, I'm not even going to roll for no one because they just don't have enough health left either way. Um, no, Good to know. that is the wrong one. I'm rolling this. Ugh. Grey Horde has got your plus four on their dexterity and still still only got a nine. Ooh. So uh, Grey Horde fails. How much damage? I do hope that uh, throwaway rears for this one. That is, and it curves around Morzord harm harmlessly. Cool. 26 hey. points of lightning damage. Crackles decoratively off my nips. Okay. Mm. Just like sparks you a little bit. Yep. No um, secret. <laughs> no one uh, is just blown across the, the arena with the force of the damage and just lands um, unconscious in the sand. Um, Grey Hood takes a tremendous amount of damage and uh, goes down onto one knee and you know, almost looks like they're down, but then sort of 
uh, looks up, you know, pries, you know, brings himself up using the shaft of, of the longbow, um, and they are still in it, but only just Vitericus, your turn, unless Orsi wants to move. Ah! Uh, oh, no, not going to cast another one. He'll move into the centre. Cool. There's your showmanship. Vitericus. Yes. Uh, okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop out from underneath the thing because I, you know, I wasn't planning oh to be God. there the whole time. And then with the mage hand. some random psychopath dropped in with a short sword and made my day worse. Um, but oh, I'm not going to jump in the water. I'm <laughs> oh, going to stand on the floor there. Oh, please do. Pretty sure the water's <laughs> electrified, so see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, can I check the crowd real quick? I mean, I know the, the fight's just about over, but, you know. Cool. Uh, yes, I'm give me a there. perception check, please. Yep, that is a ten total. Ten. Uh, um, it's too noisy, you just hear screaming. <laughs> yeah, it's all rather chaotic out there. You don't see anyone you recognise. No, yep, that's okay. Um, can I start a Supercell chant? <laughs> Supercell, Supercell. Supercell, Supercell. Uh, yeah, I'm joining in. Let's make this <laughs> a... A uh, charisma check, straight up charisma check from Vitericus. Is this acting with advantages or anything? Yeah, yeah, no, right. That's a performance. Mm. Well, yes, I would like it to be a performance, but I rolled a five total, so pfft, on charisma. Uh, now, here's the thing: the difficulty class, uh, the DC was very low because oh. Supercell is riding a freaking dinosaur. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so a five away. with a five, it's actually uh, basically it's just good you didn't roll a one. So uh, part of the crowd actually starts going super cell, super cell, super cell, super cell. <laughs> and, Wonderful. And then so uh, in a final bit of stagecraft, can I dissonant whisper Grey Hood so it looks like he fell over from the ball lightning? Sure. So like just a quiet little. You suck. Uh, <laughs> through, the, through the ether. Um, to make it look like he tried to get up, almost got to it, well, did get to his feet, and then just blink into the ground. So that is, I will burn my last third level spell slot to do it and everything, just to really kill this dude. Okay. Um, uh, so that's wisdom, save a 14. Uh, and that's a failure from Grey Hood. Perfect. Please take 14 points of damage. 14 is enough. Um, can, uh, yeah. Uh, so Greyhood goes down and I'm actually going to ask it this time, Doug, how would you like to do this? What does the crowd see? Okay. So basically with the supercell chant, I'm hoping that eyes have been drawn to Orsi, um, and sort of the devastation that he has wrought. And while their eyes are all there, I'm just quietly going to gong a dissonant whisper, you know, ever so subtly, um, over towards Grey Hood, and he's just going to collapse forward with cool. little arcs of lightning still sort of spurting off of him. So, the, yep, yeah, the lightning, the ball lightning has gone out from Orsi and it is uh, taken, it has thrown no one out of the middle of the arena. It is... Uh, brought Grey Hood down to their knees and what the crowd sees is Grey Hood uh, struggle to get back up and then just collapse and the crowd just interprets this as Grey Hood almost survived the lightning but in the end couldn't manage it and, and it was the ball lightning that took him out. That's probably what you think also, Orsi. That's what Orsi sees. Um, and with that, the crowd just roars, the bell rings. Uh, Rexlin, uh, uh, with the uh, use of thaumaturgy, bellows out across the arena. Victory! The God Touched have won! And it's just absolutely deafening, the screaming from the crowd and... Um, you can see some are disappointed that their favourite heroes have gone down, but everybody is appreciative of the of the magnificent show you've put on. And now that, uh, wh what are you all going to do now that you're uh, victorious? So 
you know, you is know there that... enough room? Mm-hmm. Oh, go on. No, you go, you go. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, you know that that big energetic pop off that a that a um, gigantic f- sport player gets when they've done the thing and everyone's cheering. That's absolutely what Morzod's doing. He is roaring with laughter and. Uh, and is he doing in. the Terry Crews like each peck is like? Oh yeah, he can absolutely do that. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like oh, both of his pecs are celebrating with him. Um, mm. as, Individually. As, yes, yes. Why don't? Yep. Bagma has he's leapt just, yep. on top Springing. of those partitions, and she's doing a dance. <laughs> Could Aussie take throw away on a lap and like pick uh-huh. everyone up? Uh-huh. We beat them. We beat them. <laughs> uh, can Dagmar give me an acrobatics check just to not fall off the granulations? <laughs> oh. No. Not yeah, one. thirteen. Thirteen's oh. good enough. Um, there, there's I a mo- plus nine in acrobatics. Yeah, there's a moment where it looks like Dags might be about to face plant down into the dirt, but uh, yeah, she manages to regain her balance. Um, as this is going on, um, a couple of clerics come onto the field and just cast uh, healing word at <clears throat> uh, the three downed. I don't, I don't do the stretcher thing. Hut, 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 hut. No, uh, just brings uh, each of the the fallen fighters back up to uh, back to consciousness, and they all just sit up, look around, realize what's happening, you know, what happened, and just sort of shrug their shoulders and move back. And mm. they get they get some you know appreciative applause from the crowd for you know putting up a good fight. To distract from all of that and to kind of keep the crowd amped. I'm going to burn my last second level spell slot on Nirek's uh, major spectacle again and make a giant victory arch in the center where Aussie has just sort of left with, you know, gold lettering of God touched and, and like fanfare and everything basically Ooh. to get the crowd hyped. Cool. And he spice that up with his last third level spell and just cast, cast a lightning bolt. Yep. Just Go push. ahead. And uh, Viterikos, I'll say, give me a performance check with advantage. Hooray. Let's see how we go. Uh, that is a twenty-five total. Oh, yeah, very high. Uh, the the if you thought the the roar of the crowd was deafening before, it was nothing compared to what's what's happening now. It's just uh, Vitericus. This is the most incredible audience response you have ever encountered. Um, Orsi, you are suddenly aware of the fact that they are all looking at you. And I'm not going to speak, I don't want to speak for Orsi, but I think he might be enjoying this. <laughs> he might actually I mean, like Carol being seen. It. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, I want to pick everyone up just on the back of uh, throw away, do like yeah. a lap. Cool. We'll pick the other three up. I don't know if more of would fit. Um, I will get an am- animal handling check, please. Okay. Come on, girl. 16. Let's Sixteen. Go away. That is good enough. Uh, she is a, you know, a, a traveling mount. So yeah, Just this is girl. what she expects to do. Um, and as you're going around the crowd, are, uh, there are now f- flowers being thrown down. There are coins being tossed into the, the arena. Um, even a few maybe uh, garments of outerwear. Uh, nothing too, oh. you know, nothing too <laughs> inappropriate. Say, but only oh. outerwear. <laughs> Only outerwear, right, um, okay. and yeah. So uh, I'll I'll get uh, perception checks from each of you now to see whether there's uh, anyone you do recognise in the crowd. In the audience, That's an okay. eight. Uh, twenty from Dax. Wow. Go to Twenty-one. 21. <laughs> Six from Mozart. No. He's. He can't see anything. He's, He's just in the moment. Too He's in the moment. He is yeah. absolutely his in the moment. His bandana's just slipped out over his eyes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, Orsi, uh, uh, actually, Orsi and Dagmar, uh, you both see, yes, um, uh, Connie is uh, in the crowd. Um, she's right up the back, but uh, she is on her feet and actually just dancing around. Um, she is as loudly as she can. Yeah. Um, How do you sign in capitals? She she is absolutely uh, uh, parting it up. She has just had the yeah. most. She's just seen uh, her new hero, um, you know, become you know, essentially the new champion. But it is at that point that Rexlin uh, hollers out, 
So, we have a championship team, but now the question is, will they challenge our reigning champion for the belt and the right to be known as the single champion of Providence? Will one of you, uh, is one of you prepared to take on this one versus one fight? asking right now yes yeah is no one the reigning champ and you can see that no one has stood up and is limped back into the ground and there are now clerics and druids standing around you get the feeling that they are prepared to heal up whoever is uh willing to take part in this final fight oh i mean i'll fight him if no one else wants to Holy shit, that would be fantastic! Ooh. Can, mm, we can't help, hey! If Time someone else like, oh, burned up any spell slots or anything, because obviously yeah. all I've got is a. Yeah, I'm so out of it. Run, run. I'm out I mean, of third level, so if I could fly. Pretty good. That would have been awesome, because he wouldn't have been able to hit me. <laughs> <laughs> but I did that lightning bolt at the end. I shot myself uh, in the foot. No. Uh, mm. Did that one count? If it was sure. Um, mm. Probably did. Yeah, I did. I've only got second levels, all my first levels, and then cantrips. Mm. The crowd oh, is the, the crowd is is chanting. No one, no one, no one. I'm just gonna look to everyone else. Be like, does anyone else want to do it? <laughs> Mozart is going to absolutely thumbs up, Dag. <laughs> right. Dags is going to leap off the mother buttersaurus and try and do a little flip. Okay. Roll for that. Acrobatics, please. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. It's very impressive. You, you, uh, you know, perfect landing. The crowd roars, and we are going to now take a short break and come back uh, to see who is the ultimate champion of Providence. Uh, so, thank you for watching. We'll be back in just a moment. And we are back and the arena uh, after only about 30 seconds has been reset. Uh, no one has been healed to full health. Uh, Dagmar did not need any healing. Um, they are uh, now positioned at the north and south parts of the arena, except kind of one's moving Dagmar around. Get back there. Um, I was hanging out on the west. <laughs> <laughs> I was helping. Helping. Um, so, uh, Vitericus, Orsi, and Morzod have been, uh, escorted up to, uh, the stands where they are now, uh, able to watch, uh, the next fight turn out, uh, play out the championship brawl between, uh, the massive black skinned war painted half orc with a pole axe and the tiny but ferocious dwarf Dagmar. So with war painted, uh, also war painted. Yeah, <laughs> of course, not Dagmar, as far as the audience is concerned, is Brunhilda 
eye shooter who has not actually shot any eyes, which is probably a good thing under the circumstances, but it's still... It uh, seems like that wouldn't be PG-13. Yeah, it's a hell of a name. Uh, so as you take your, uh, the th three of you who aren't fighting, um, whereabouts in the crowd are you sitting? Are you right up the front? Are you going to head to the back of the stands? Did they give us that, uh, that glass? Yeah, like a, room yeah, like a VIP, VIP <laughs> seating. There is, uh, that there is only one area like that. And that's where the master of ceremonies, uh, Rexlin oh. is currently uh, speaking from. I kind of want to be. I kind of want to be down the front. Morzo actually would be definitely down the front, absolutely leaning, the front. Over, can, leaning over. the Can barricade. we get Connie? Yeah. Can we get Can Go or someone go get Connie? Or... Yeah, I'll go get Connie and bring her down, yeah. and we'll we'll hang out. Sure. Um, I want to sit somewhere with good eye, like where I can maintain eye contact with no one. <laughs> it's okay. Probably we're all just up the front. You would think. Yep. Yeah. So you're, uh, yeah, you're all getting lots of cheers and applause as you walk around. Uh, yeah, people keep stopping you to sort of shake your hand or, you know, uh, various gestures of, of praise. Um, Connie is delighted to see you, Vitericus, and more than happy to come and uh, join the rest of you. And uh, Morzot, as you take a seat, um, you hear a voice next to you say, Dude, I thought that'd be you down there. God, hut, like indeed. <laughs> Mozart's just Mozart's just gonna laugh. Still so happy, and he, and he and he is like clearly very certain that that uh, Dags is gonna win. He's just just overjoyed to see her facing off in her orky battle glory. And the voice again uh, says. Dude, uh, I'm not doing like the long distance thing. I'm right next to you. <laughs> and you look up, and there is yeah. Bruin Lach, yeah, Jeff, Jeff Bridges, the, next... <laughs> uh, the big Lebowski, the next... sitting right yeah. next to you in the stalls. And he just sort of gives you the thumbs up, but then sort of looks around and just goes, shh. Hmm. Oh, I don't want to have all the fun. <laughs> Uh, sounded like Krogan Gold Challenge the whole time. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rexlin returns to the podium and uh, yeah, raises his hand and, and the audience yeah, roars in approval. And then Rexlin, uh, again, thaumaturgies, thaumaturgs, thaumaturgizes his voice uh, right across the arena and it booms around saying, Good people of Providence, our teams have fought. The winning team has been chosen, but there can only be one champion of the arena of Providence. And it has come down to these two, our reigning champion. No one has been challenged by Brunhilde Eye Shooter, who will reign victorious and walk away with the belt of the champion. We begin! The bell rings. I'm tossing you both into combat. Please roll initiative. Wait, wait. She's an Apple product. Wait. She just works. Wait. Shooter. Oh, now you're both in combat. Please roll initiative. Hey. Okay, so no one gets to go first. And no one is going to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. And just roar a bellow as he, he just goes full pelt towards Brun Brunhilde and uh, yeah Dagmar this is a terrifying sight <laughs> uh, you were happily watching all of this happen from afar last round now this uh, mountain of meat is charging at you with a very large weapon uh, but it can't quite get to you this turn so uh, it is now Dagmar's turn he charges towards me I'm going to slowly level a shot Square at the the enormous chest area, Oof, and it's only an eight. Um. Eight does not hit. Uh, the ter cool. the terrifying sight of this charging orc uh, does set you back a bit, and your arrow flies wide. 
Uh, Alrighty. You so going? I'm going to run. Um, does dash mean I can go further or? Dash is uh, only if you use your action as well. If you you've already used your action as uh, to take a shot. I can use bonus action, uh, cunning action um, to use dash. Yeah. To dash, yes. Oh dear, is this going to be an orc, half orc chasing you around the arena? Okay. Real bad for hill situation, yeah. Okay. So yes, you can double move. Can we conjure a Siri a corridor with a whole lot of doors on it so they can run in and out? <laughs> However, Dagmar is a dwarf and is therefore slightly slower than a half orc. Yeah, look, I can only move fifty. Oh, but I can go up, and he has to take longer to go up. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. So you can't go. you can't bound up onto the wooden platform. You'll have to go via the ladder. Yep. Is that? Uh, yeah, but I've got athlete, so I don't lose speed going up ladders. Okay. Boop boop boop. Just gonna casually flee. Now uh, you get to yeah. be Orlando. Yeah. Surf on stuff. I am the love child of Legolas and Gimli. <laughs> I definitely read that fan fiction. So I don't think Dagmar could make it that far. I think 50 feet total would have you here from where okay. you were. Let me move down. Yeah, cool. I'll take it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that is Dagmar's turn. No one? Uh, basically he yells, get back here! 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, uh, has to keep moving. 35, 40, 45 to climb up. 50. Um, and that is no one's turn, but he is now toe-to-toe -to -toe with you with a very large poleaxe. Dagmar, your yes, turn. Yes, and because I am a skirmisher... I can move up to half my speed as a reaction when an enemy ends its turn within five feet of me. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Benny Hill around the stadium, yeah. Uh, does Skirmisher negate attacks of opportunity? Yes, it does. Wow. Without provoking attacks of opportunity. Oh, we full like Warner Brothers boinging around him while he tries to make a swing. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> oh. A war of attrition. Who's going to get tired first? Okay. It is Dagmar's turn. Uh, yeah, I'm going to shoot him again. <laughs> Be like, hope you're having fun, buddy. Bouncy bean. <laughs> Rogues. Uh, Rogue. I'm shooting bad. Uh, yes, that misses. Rogues and bards. Back flipping all over the place, so it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, look, it's entertaining. <laughs> okay. Uh, no one is going to... Uh, yeah, first of all, is Dagmar moving? <laughs> no, let him take like Okay. <laughs> Thank you. No, no one is now going to charge in and take a swing. Nope, that's the wrong. It's a shame. I rolled uh, his hit points instead of his attack, so which is a shame because a sixty-six probably would have hit you. But roll to be healthy, <laughs> there's a fourteen hit Dagmar. It does not. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> the axe goes she got wide. Armor. Um, and it is Dagmar's turn again. Um, I'm going to back up to here. And take another shot. Okay. Um, can I roll to see if I did a wicked flip just then? Sure. Acrobatics, please. Okay, that was a 26, so I'm glad I used it on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, normally he would get a an attack of opportunity unless you're disengaging. Uh, no, he can take it. Okay. Even with I want to shoot him. Roll to flip. Okay, that is a 23 to hit you. Yeah, that hits me. Okay. 
and he rolls a one on the damage die, so it's five points of slashing damage total. It just grazes. <laughs> any dodge, it goes down to two and a half. So you take two points. This is just grazes your your shoulder, just a, a tiny sliver. You know, I get I take more damage from my king parrots landing on my arms. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna shoot him. Yes, twenty five. That's a hit. There it is. Yeah. That's acid too. It's acid damage, and it's nineteen points of acid damage. Ooh. Ow. Um, what a world, what a world. So that, that is the first, you know, truly palpable hit of the fight. And with that, the crowd roars as, um, yeah, Who's no one now has an arrow sticking into his chest with, you know, acid just, uh, leaking down and, and you know, the blood bubbling. Uh, I'll start a chant. I gouger, I gouger, I gouger, I gouger, I gouger. I shoot her. Sorry, uh, yes. I shoot. shoot her. Sorry. <laughs> we get a name wrong in the chat as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, we get a name wrong. If there was anyone her. near Mozart when I he jumped her. up, yeah, I'd, 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 I'd like to think that yeah, you know, Viterica starts I guard you, and then Canny, uh, Connie just you know slaps in and says, uh, his signs. <laughs> "Yes, you're right. I yes, shoot I shoot up. <laughs> yes, there it is. Carry on. Uh, is that the rest of? Is that all of your turn, Dagmar? Yeah, the flip was my. Extra turn. So. Okay. Uh, so no one is going to roar with fury and is going to rage. Yeah, barbarian rage. Charges forward oh, and now attacks with advantage. Eat it. I'm going, I'm going for Dagmar, but also I love barbarians. So. <laughs> that, that is a 24 to hit. Woo. Yeah, that hits. What kind of barbarian is he? Ooh, I want to know. Still rolling badly. Uh, eight points of slashing damage to Dagmar. Down to four. Okay, four points of slashing damage. I'm just going to beat my chest back at him and scream. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny dwarf and scream. <laughs> Do you want to make this an intimidation roll? Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Can she do it with advantage because the crowd's chanting her name? Sure. Why not? Yeah. Fourteen. Fourteen. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he just grins wickedly at you and you think uh he's not angry with you. You think he's enjoying it. <laughs> uh it is your turn now, Dagmar. I am going to pull out my daggers, do a slash slash. Mm. So first one Oof. is an eight, so that misses, I'm guessing. Yeah, that misses. Uh, second one is a 14. Uh, 14 hits. Hey. Oh, um, oh, wait a minute. No. Um, yes, the 14 still hits, uh, but you actually get advantage on those rolls because he is uh, using reckless attacks, which means he gets advantage, oh. but you get advantage against him also. Oh, cool. So you can uh, re-roll on the one that didn't? Well, you can re-roll both in case you get a natural 20. Okay. All right, so it goes up to a 19. And a 22. Okay, so you've got two hits now. Yep. Cool, so one damage is four. The other one is six. Respectable 10 points of damage. Do you get sneak cool. attack on advantage as well? Yeah, I do. You do. Yes. Thank you for remembering all of my extra shit. <laughs> so sneak attack I've on seen, both. I've seen your character sheet. I checked like the feats and stuff and it's just like, 
a list. So plus twelve plus nine. Good grief. Mozart in the stands leaping up and down. <laughs> so yeah, Dagmar yeah, flips back. Um he charges in the axe barely grazes you and immediately Dagmar just stab, stab you know, into the chest, into the abdomen and you hit something very tender there and as you pulled it out he, he actually crumples for a moment and then sort of looks up and you can see there is genuine surprise on his face um, Holy shit, this dwarf though Is that your entire turn? Oh, so chill is, uh, it, is that your turn? You oh, yeah, that's my turn. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. At this point, I think I should disengage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, can I move while I disengage? Uh, yes, that is uh, part of disengage. We can only move so far. Uh, let's go down here. That seems fine. I can't go where he can't catch me, so... We'll, we'll just make him work for it. Uh, yes, that's right. Disengage. You can. It's an action, except for you. It's a bonus action. Ah, you used your bonus action for the second uh, stabby attack. Yes, I did. Yeah. Is, so that, you, is that reaction part of the cunning action? Or is that reactions or is that only bonus actions? Cunning action. I'm not good with rogues. I'm sorry. I can take a bonus action on each of my turns to take the dash, disengage, or hide action. Yeah, so yeah. you've already used your bonus action, so you can't dash or disengage. Yeah. Or anything. That's right. I'll hang. Okay. It, I got some hit points. It is no one's turn, and they're still raging, so that is advantage on the polex. He rolls two threes. For a total of nine, he misses. Um, yeah, with um, those, those two dagger strikes, it's just swing and swing. All right, well, I'm going to risk an attack of opportunity because I want to use my bow again, and I want to use it with advantage. Um, missing does not uh, trigger an attack of opportunity. You'd have to move out of your uh, melee range. Yeah, so can I, like, move away... Uh, on your turn, you can, yes. Oh, is it um, not my turn yet? I'm just, uh, it is now your turn, yes, because he's got okay. nothing. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. I, th I, thought you, gonna... I thought you were trying to react to his miss. I was wrong about oh, that, no, no, sorry. No. Yeah. No, that's fine. Um, I, oh, wait, actually, if he ends his turn within... Within five feet of you, yeah. you have skirmisher, which means you can move back as a reaction. That way you can still use your bonus action to do other stuff if you need to. Yeah. God, you can tell Matt's kids came up with this game. <laughs> it used to be worse. Is it what? So oh, up to ten, so I can move ten feet away. Uh, you gonna have the three point five forever argument here, or? <laughs> I just want to get far enough to use my bow. One, ten, two, I go there. That's fifteen feet away. And you can't move through move an opponent's through yeah. Yeah, space. Yeah. Uh, you could... Uh, roll to leapfrog over him. You could basically dive off the platform. Then uh, shooting up at him would be... That would, would that be, negate my advantage? Uh, that would just be a regular shot then, yes. Yeah, but I couldn't sneak attack him. I'm going to sneak him again. Uh, sorry, what was that? I'm going to stay where I am, and I'm going to stab him again. Okay. So I still get advantage, right? Uh, yes. Because he's still raging? He is still raging. Yeah. Uh, if, he used, if, raging he used, uh, if he used his reckless attacks, you get advantage. But I don't know if he did or not. He did, yes. That's why he, he had anyway. advantage, he had on, advantage. Yeah, on his attack. Yeah. Oh, and he rolled two threes. Yep. Jesus. That's bad. That's bad luck, bud. <laughs> Right, so I assume 18... we're eating, eating popcorn in the stands. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, 18 and a 25. Wow. Yep. 
Bruin Lock Popcorn's will... just going everywhere every time Morzord yells. <laughs> Bruin Lock will surreptitiously summon um some yeah, some corn that Morzod can uh heat up in the skillet, which I assume Viterricus can help with. <laughs> I don't have the spell slots. Ah okay. <laughs> Bruin Lock will take care of it. Oh go on. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure Bru Bruin's got the slots for that. All I can do is heal the corn. I could zap the corn, that might work. <laughs> I mean Like a microwave. Yeah. I could mock the corn, I guess. Um, <laughs> Vitericus, as you're sort of making these suggestions about the corn and the skillet, skillet you see this this guy just sitting next to Morzod just reach across and, and touch the skillet and immediately heats up. And you look it up, look up at him, and he just you know, gives you the yeah, nice man. I know that spell too. It's a good one. <laughs> Excellent spell. Um. Yeah, I rolled an 18 and a 25 to hit. Both hit. Yeah, good. You'd want to hope. All right, so four plus two plus 13 plus <laughs> eight. That's numbers. Okay. It is now your it's turn. Um, Kynwen, how do you want to do this? You've defeated no one. Explain what the audience sees. Okay, so you know how I had my two daggers in below? I basically want to rock climb this motherfucker. <laughs> 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 and then reach his face and give him a little kiss on the cheek. <laughs> and that's oh. how he dies. And this is precisely I'm what gonna happens. I going to say good fight while I give him a little kiss. Uh, you, you climb up him and, um, yeah, and you, and you can see sort of the, the, the life draining from his eyes as you come face to face and as you, you know, give him a little kiss, he just grins slightly and whispers, respect, yes. and then falls back with you on top of him. And the crowd I'm gonna goes. My little dance. <laughs> and the crowd goes wild. Uh, clerics immediately come in, uh, heal him up, um, uh, but he continues to just lie on his back on the wooden platform, happy, f happy to just let uh, the crowd adulate you. Um, Rexlin uh, bellows out, "We have a new champion!" And the whole crowd goes wild. And Is anybody um, sort of anywhere near Morzord when he pops off so hard, they'd better watch out that he flipped over because he is. The popcorn's a... everywhere. It's everywhere. like that one guy in the movies, yeah. 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 Uh, Connie is going wild. Uh, Bruin Lach is you know, on his feet and actually doing a uh, basically a middle aged guy dance, exactly what you'd uh, expect the to see. Machine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and Rexlin. Uh, holds up this uh, belt, uh, which he like twice Dagmar's <laughs> tosses down, and it, it lands magic, on magic, on the wooden magic. platform next to you, uh, Dagmar. And yes, even as it flies through the air, it seems to shrink slightly, so it is now comfortably dwarf sized. And you now have gold? you can add to your inventory the belt of the champion. Well, Yay! Uh, I shoot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Morzlin's like, yes, yes, thanks, I knew you could do it. <laughs> so, so good to have happy. She's done the thing. And uh, with that, uh, Rexelin, uh, yeah, announces, good people of Providence, that is the end of today's formal activities, but the city is as ever ours to enjoy. Uh, please uh, drink responsibly and remember that this is a residential area. People uh, will be trying to get to sleep tonight. Enjoy! And the you know, crowd goes wild and, you know, eventually some are starting to, you know, stand up and make, you know, file their way to the exits. O others are just sitting around and relaxing. Others are still just cheering and applauding. Um <clears throat> Be cash prizes? Yes. 
Um, so Dagmar uh, Zuka, the pit master, uh, comes out, uh, the you know, big female minotaur, and uh, says to you, uh, uh, well, uh, I assume I can give you the prize money and you'll uh, share it with the rest of your team, or would it be better to get them all here? I can pass it on. Um, were there, like, extra fees for winning the solo fight? Or... <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh, the belt. Nice. You have won the belt and the adulation of the people. That should be enough. But That's in addition good. to that... I'm just going to roll to see exactly how much you got, because uh, there's the 1,000 plus a lot. <laughs> Yay. 1,000 plus a lot. Plus one lot. Yeah, I'm just working how much the lot is. Uh, that is another 900. So a total of 1,900 gold pieces are yours nice. to divide among the party. That's how orcs count. One too many. Divided by four. Someone do the math. Four hundred and seventy-five coins each, lads. Nice, nice. Can renovate our bedrooms. And <laughs> we're gonna have a changing rooms episode now. <laughs> yeah, and uh, no one uh, is now back on his feet. Uh, turns to you uh, and says, uh, "Brunhilde, or whatever your name is." Brunhilde, is it? Fort well. I uh, likewise might have to challenge you for that belt again one day, but not Please today. Do. Not this day. Can I hold out my tiny hand? And do the victory thing. He's gonna just lift you up. <laughs> he does. He actually just picks you up, and you know, ho holds you up, and so, for all the crowd to see. And there's another round of cheers and applause. And all the gazelles what? rear up, and the and the you know. <laughs> We Zebra bow down to our new and... king. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. <laughs> Basically the coolest day that yep. Dagmar has ever had. <laughs> yep. And uh, as he puts you down, he he uh, just quietly says in your ear, I'd stay clear of lover boy for a little while. I think he's going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to tackle. And then he <laughs> uh, quietly makes his way out of the arena. Nice. I'm gonna to toddle back to my, back to my buddies. Oh man, um, Morzod gives you a a very measured, like just the limit of back slap you can handle without falling over. Um, <laughs> uh, let's congratulations. Let's just make that a strength roll from Morzod. I want to <laughs> I want to test oh, that. Morzod, Morzod is, is not famed for, uh, no, no, me not for measuring subtlety. these things. Should this yeah. be a saving throw? <laughs> Just make uh, it a... Check from you. Yeah. Straight up strength check. What yep. have we got? There we go. I'm in charge. Oh, yep. Oh. It, it is a, a genuinely uh, non-destructive pat on the back. Yeah. From Morzod. Perfectly measured. He, he's apparently aware enough that he really should knock Dags over at the moment. <laughs> um, am I like covered in blood, given that I've just climbed a man with a pair of daggers? You're not. <laughs> you're not covered with blood. It's surprising how little blood comes out of a person when you do that. Um, yeah. You know, it, it it'll ooze out, but it won't spurt all over you unless you actually hit an artery. Um, got him in my neck. Yeah. <laughs> So you're you're, you're actually you're actually looking pretty clean at the moment. You've got just a single cut on an arm and a little bit of blood, probably yeah, probably running down your blood. arms from where from where yeah. it came out of his his chest. But other than that, you're looking good. Mm. I love it. Yeah, good point. Looking fine. Um, as Dagmar walks back, I'll use my dancing lights to make little fireworks to sort of follow <laughs> her around. <laughs> Oh man, that's so good. I mean, all of us, I think we did well, but Batericus, those spells were phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, Thank that you. was awesome. I just convinced no one that everyone else was, you know, easier to hit than me, basically, and away we went. Good job. Great. And I have to say, the initiative worked out so well for you. It really mm. did. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, howdy, am I glad we got the drop on them. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yes, but uh, centre stage certainly belonged to Supercell, I suspect, for our main fight. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. Throw away! I forgot we had her. Yes, yes. Excellent anti-frog device. Good to know for yeah. future reference. Dagmar, yeah. didn't you pocket a few of those little pearls? Frogs again. Oh yeah, I still have a handful of these things. Are they still charged? Would they, they fizzle? As yeah. you, even as you take them out, they crumble into dust uh, that mm, fizzles right. away. I guess I don't. Yeah. There it is. And be I, better than the grenades in the trousers anyway. Um, this yeah. And as this happens, you sense the magic uh, that was protecting everyone in the uh, arena is uh, fa fading away. And you think that uh, whatever it was that... Uh, empowered the marbles and the chests so was part was attached to whatever was happening in the arena so it's a very specific and local uh spell Ooh, don't forget to add your gold to your inventories if you haven't yes uh, can i brandish the big sack of gold what was it again 475 each 475 okay nice let's find something to spend this on yes perfect so it is now getting on to about uh, four or five in the afternoon. The sun is uh, starting to get low. Uh, it's not dark by any means, but uh, you can see that people are, are now thinking about, you know, what, are, what they're going to do for dinner, how long are they going to keep partying for, that sort of thing. Where would um, the other team be? The other team uh, would be, last you saw they had disappeared into the... Uh, through the gate to the north and uh, so that they're under the stands in a similar sort of staging area to where the four of you began the fight. Mm. Orsi kind of wants to go find Pev. Oh, um, he'd be such a poor sport, though. I don't think that would be a good... He's no exactly one right. said that baby face is um, super pissed, so... Mm. Maybe He's wait exactly till you see like... him around the academy. He was exactly the same as I was when I was his age. Wow, what a fucker. Yeah, I know, I was worse. You think I'm bad now? I was worse. I think you're great now. Thank you. But I know how it feels, so. Uh, Did we get any uh, inkling that he was even allied with the Academy? I didn't even think he was a student there. He didn't seem like he was. You've not seen him at the Academy. I um, we haven't really hung around too much either. Uh, while you're having this conversation, uh, Connie... Uh, gets your attention, Orsi. Oh, um, yes, Connie. And you know, obviously she's full of praise and there's been a lot of that already. Uh -huh. um, but she, she then uh, signs, essentially trying to indicate that she needs to go back. Oh, and she can I'll pass, you... pass her bedtime. Do you need an escort? Are you fine to get back on your own? Thanks for coming. And yeah, you know, she uh, turns to Dagmar and then uh, does a very low curtsy. <laughs> Amazing. Can I hold up my hand for a high five? Uh, yes, she uh, slaps down at you. <laughs> oh yeah, she's taller than me. Okay. Yeah. Also, he does want to go find uh, no one and Pev if he's there. Okay. Uh, so Connie skips off. Um, uh, as Orsi goes into uh, the, the area under the stands to the north, um, you can see that uh, no one is there is, uh, is being tended to by uh, one of the clerics just to make sure that all the healing uh, took properly. Um, and... Uh, and up all his fingers and toes. Looks up at you. Um, Orsi, are, uh, are you all still in your costumes or are you... Um, uh I think we would be. I think he is, but his hood's off and his mask is off. Okay. In my doodles, Mozod seems to have lost his apron somewhere, but um, <laughs> other than that... <laughs> That's what he's doing right now. He's just going around the ring. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. It, it's, it's, a cap oh, it's a Captain Kirk thing. Somehow Mozod's apron <laughs> just <laughs> fell off. Oh no! <laughs> my apron, where did that go? <laughs> but yes, uh, also you do, uh, you do find no one. He, he looks up at you and says... Ah, so the uh, wizard who rode a dinosaur, that is one that I think the people will remember. 
I hope that's a good thing. We found her in a tomb. <laughs> oh. I, Charming. I'm sure there's a story behind that. Of course. Um, I'm Orsi, by the way. Orsi. Pleased to meet you. My name is Sargash. Sargash. S A R G A S H. G A S H. Um, I actually wanted to ask if you wouldn't mind. And he takes out a notebook. Um, writing a, just like a signature. A friend of ours is a big fan. Um, <laughs> he, he he might be blushing. It's hard to see. Um, because he's still. He's, and he's still got the war paint on and so forth, but uh, he, he uh, big, toothy, tusky grin and says, Aww. of course, of course, yeah. And uh, Her name's Connie. He explains it, yeah. Okay. And, and he writes, uh, essentially, uh, uh, to Connie, keep on fighting, no Aww. one. And the no one is very fancy and quite florid. It, it's well practiced. <laughs> yeah, nice. Thank you. Oh, man, I love this. There's the scrappy little guy around anywhere. The scrappy... <laughs> oh, God, scrappy dude. Mm. The scrappy little... That could be any of a number of people I know. Ah, I realise that now. Uh, elf. <laughs> oh, I uh, love a boy. Uh, uh, he stormed off. Uh, I'd recommend avoiding him for a few days at least. Well, if you see him... Tell him also looking for what to speak to him. Okay, I shall super cell, oh, whatever. I shall pass the message on if I see him, but uh I should point out that I'm looking to avoid him myself. Not that bad. Is he a student at the academy? What oh no. No, I believe I got the impression he tried there once, but they wouldn't have him. Or he got kicked out, I don't know. He's uh very sure of himself. Uh, not one to take instruction, if you get my meaning. Yeah, he seems like it. Uh, academy. Having said right, that, um, I've fought with him several times before. He, is, uh, he does know how to work on a team, and he has proven valuable in the past. Not so much today. Everyone has... Well, we had... A bard on our team, right? Really cuts you down with those words. <laughs> yes, I gathered. See, the thing is, the lover boy is a bard himself, and uh, he was planning to do pretty much what yours did, except yours did it first. So he's a bard. You're kidding. Ah, uh, he's <laughs> yes. Uh, he, a wordsmith? Does he play? Ah, uh, he sings. He sings. And I will admit that he does have a pleasant voice when he's. Using it to not be a dick. Oh, how interesting. I will pass that little tidbit of information along to my friends. Go well, on, thank you for the signature. Thank and you for the fight. Please send my regards to your compatriots. They all fought well and it was a victory well earned. Absolutely. Well, I'll let you finish healing up. Yes, thank you. Of course you will. Cuddle off. Oh, also, while he's in costume, Glow is white. She's not regular ah. brown. Cool. <laughs> Very cool. Thunderbolts. Uh, I suspect while that's going on, uh, Morzod would know where to get a drink out on the street, I'm sure. Morzod oh, yeah. swept up in a crowd of football hooligans, basically. Yes. He's, he has descended upon the bars, and you may not see him for a few days. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll hang out for a go. little bit, and I'll big up your fighting grey hood uh, over the course of the whole thing and sort of do a little <laughs> bit of bonding with you over that. Yep, yeah. Big absolutely. superhero landing off the off yep, the platform, uh, all that sort of stuff. Uh huh. Uh huh. And uh, many, many flagons passed Br around. Uh, Brew and Luck is very much in the mood for partying. Um, he also, a uh, obviously more so, you get the impression he wants to party by being incognito about it. Um, mm -hmm. so as long as you're happy with that, he'll hang out with you. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. And he will go for as long as you. He will party for as long as you party, and then yep. some. Yep, yep, yep. All the partying. That's a, that's Mozod wrapped up for the uh, for the rest of the year, the the foreseeable future. Uh, what is Dagmar doing? Dagmar is actually going to slink off and follow Connie back to common ground. Okay. 
Uh, people doubt. Hmm. This has been a lot. <laughs> she's going to go out on a high because her tiny body is overwhelmed. <laughs> she's got big emotions. <laughs> yeah, she basically wants to go and float in the bath for several hours. <laughs> so yeah, she's oh, just going to quietly bless. nip off after Connie and catch bless. up if she can. So is there anything else that any of your characters are doing before uh, you eventually rest? Uh, Morzod, will Morzod be returning to Common Ground tonight? Uh, I mean, how, how, uh, if the rest of everyone else decides, okay, it's nine o'clock, it's time to go, but go to bed and all sort of clear out. There is, uh, Mor Morzod may wind down, but like, there is certainly, and there is an element in the city who are quite happy to party all night. It is a gay, yeah. it is a day of games. Uh, it yep. is a special day. All night then, all night. Cool. <laughs> So Morzod does not re return that evening. Uh, it'll be fun to see next week, I think, what uh, how Morzod <laughs> yeah, shows up. Roll for hangover. <laughs> where, where we find Morzod, which got yes. him. Yep. Yes. Uh, what about the rest of you? What bin he's upside down in. <laughs> uh, I'll hang out for a bit and then work my way back to common ground sort of after evening meal, I guess. Cool. Um, yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, if Rexel's around, I also would love to speak to him just for a second too. Uh, speak to who? Sorry, Rexel. Uh, Rexlin. Rexlin. Who's Rexel? Is that a, <laughs> is that a, like a, a Panadol? I think that's like a drug. Say, is Rexel it sounds like Shepard? the lead singer of a hair metal band. Rexel. Look, honestly, I think ninety percent of fantasy character names could double as drugs. <laughs> so here's my character Oxycodon. Yeah, Rexel, <laughs> Rexel and B. Oxycodon. Yeah. Was he cutting? yeah. So, uh, yeah, also you do find Rexlin uh, is just sort of uh, wrapping things up, having a few words of Zuka, the fight master. Um, excuse me. Oh, yes. Hello. Well done. Thanks. Um, I have a question. Oh, far away. Kind of personal. Oh, um, shall we... And he sort of, yeah, and Zuka, you know, the Minotaur says, I've got things to take care of. And she lumbers off. Thanks. Um, how did you, um, get like that? Like, <laughs> oh, like this. <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly common for us, right? Oh, no, but. She gets swole, bro. That's. <laughs> What you want, man? I mean, this... Uh, Protein. The same <laughs> like way that... Lad, he ate four dozen eggs. The same way that any human gets into shape like this, the same way that any half-orc gets into shape like this, it's not a matter of genetics. It's purely something I chose to be. You let the heavy thing, you put the heavy thing down again. Right. If someone it wanted to get a little bit stronger, I guess, where would you suggest they start? Huh. Well, uh, I put on most of this strength uh, fighting here and training here in the arena. So I'm not sure that would work for you since you uh, use your mind to fight rather than your body. Uh, you do other stuff. Well, if you were to choose to do that... Uh, you could start training here with me if you wanted to. Well, not with me, but with uh, Fightmaster Zuka over there does run uh, classes uh, for personal defense as well as training in the arena. We might be able to... I, I'm sure she'd be happy to uh, introduce you to the others and get you into some kind of training regime. I mean, yet. Yeah, I mean, you know, whatever. Like, if you're free. <laughs> He nods and says, sure, I'll go and have a word with her. I'm sure she'll be happy to. Um, why don't you uh, come here? Uh, dawn tomorrow is when they normally meet. So if you're feeling up to it, we'll see that's you. fine. I mean, four hours is all we need, right? Uh, that's true. It's convenient, though. 
do I have to wear this outfit? So is regular okay? <laughs> I'd recommend against it. Uh, just wear something loose and comfortable. All right. Well, I guess I'll see you or whoever's here at the one tomorrow then. Excellent. And uh, he turns around and says, "Zuka," and he wanders off after the Minotaur to have a word with her. He's going to go back to the thing, the orphanage. Common ground. Common ground. Yep. I don't know why I thought it was called Convergence. I was like, what's that? Hmm. Convergence. Uh, no, that sounds like an evil it. corporation. No, no, it sounds like a cult. It, it, mm. it sounds like the, 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 the end game of an evil cult. You know, they are planning mm. for the, the convergence. convergence. Yeah. Yeah. Have you taken your Kool-Aid for the conversion? <laughs> oh my god, what? And, yeah, and he's gonna give Connie her uh, signature as well that he got. Excellent. Uh, she is absolutely delighted. Um, and she will basically uh, talk, you know, talk or sign to Orsi and Mime for as long as Orsi uh, is patient with her about how cool the fight was and wasn't it great yeah. when this happened and that happened. She's probably signing way too fast. You can't keep up. Yep. Also, you have no idea. She she is. It's as though she's forgotten that other people can't read sign language for, because she's just not. so excited at this moment. Uh, but you yeah. do get the gen, general impression of that of like when she's when she actually just starts miming, you know, the wizard on the dinosaur. Uh, yeah. You get the impression. You get the idea of what's going on. Thank you. Okay. And then you'll you know go sit down somewhere. Cool. Viterikus, what's the rest of your day involved? Breathe into a paper bag a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to go cry in a corner or somewhere. <laughs> Seems fair. Uh, I suspect after I've sort of hung out with Morzod and the crew for a bit and decided that they're going to go much harder than I'm willing to, um, well, you know, uh, comfortable doing after a fight, I'm just going to head back to Common Ground and hang out in the common rooms downstairs. Mm -hmm. uh, probably make something light, um, you know, evening snacky. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Yep, because uh, Morzod will be in the corner. Yeah, yeah. and Morzod's not there to cook for you, so. No, no I know. He'll come back after a bath. He stocked it up. I'm pretty sure Vinny could make toast. Are you hungry? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I'm not hungry, but I could peck at something. You know, do you do you need anything? How how do elves work? No. Okay. No one ever <laughs> asks, but I'm actually really good at cooking. Really? How exciting! Where'd you pick up that skill? Kind of like a, how would you explain it? Like a culinary class, you know, <laughs> private chefs, things like that. Yeah, fun. So you'd be cooking high end stuff then, probably more than the the wonderful nutritious protein bulk that Morzod makes for us. Stick to your yes. ribs. Yes, little bit different from the uh, heaping mash of proteins. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, but if you want something, I don't mind. Well, if you want to cook, I will eat. He's going to make, like, the world's tiniest French toast. Perfect. It's going to be Hang like... On, this it's big. got eggs, though. He's not eating it. Oh, that's true. Okay. While uh, they're doing that, Dax is going to make herself, like, five sandwiches. <laughs> With just like carved meat in the middle. I was gonna say, what's in the sandwich? <laughs> like you got the, you got the salami and the corned beef and the roast beef. Oh yeah, gonna, like go to take the slices of bread, and each one has like this tiny square taken out. Yeah, she's banging it. It's basically she's eating an entire loaf of bread and like her side of meat. <laughs> meat with bread in it. So, uh, yeah. just just because I want to visualize this. Um, You've got Vitericus with the tiny French toast. You've got Dagmar with the skyscraper of bread and meat. What's Orsi eating? Ah, uh, cup of tea. Probably tea and like if it does. What's the avocado status? No avocados. <laughs> Not yet. It's only been um, a day. But uh, <laughs> between the kitchen and the garden, there is now a variety of fruit, vegetables, and uh, there are now some sort of lentils and beans and that sort of thing. Do you know thing. what? Probably like a, ratatou like a ratatouille. Cool. Yep. Yeah, like, got some cucumber sandwiches. Like tiny. Yep. No problem getting yeah, the... Like no problem getting the like ingredients for that. Like in, a, like in a ramekin. Like a tiny ratatouille in a ramekin. He makes one for... Dagmar, do you want top. one? 
I will take whatever is going. Yes, please. <laughs> he makes some ramekins of ratatouille. <laughs> Dagmar is currently being the uh, the the warrior from um, uh, Monster Hunter and just consuming anything that's nearby. Yeah, she's tiny, but she eats a lot. Yep, hollow she's legs. <laughs> Indeed. Mm. Um, while we're eating, I'll keep everyone entertained with some card tricks. No hey. reads, just like, is this your card? Oh, type stuff. I I'll am amazed at every single one. I'll just get a that general. Is my card. Just wow. a performance check from Fatericus. See how we go. Well, that's a thirteen total. Thirteen. You're a bit tired. Um, yeah. You you don't actually you don't actually spoil the trick at any point, but you're a bit slow. And a, a few times, once you go, wait a minute, how's this part? Oh yeah, that, that's right. That's how this part works. Um, but the really advanced ones. Yeah, you know, Dagmar, of course, I, is blown away. I think they're clapping. <laughs> so uh, they have to. Is there a food roll? Does it taste good? <laughs> is it good? No, I'm going ratatouille. to say that um, since we've sort of established Norsi's backstory, that you know, Orsi yeah. can cook. Uh, it is good food. More a question. I have had that in his like backstory since yeah. before we started that he makes tiny food i'm um, waiting for an opportunity it's it's <laughs> more a question of how does dagmar feel about uh, a very different style of cooking got like the He's like the mash by the veg Verda too is just like sliced vegetables in a pastry right no, no pastry no, no. just yeah, it's, soup. Soup. it's like minestrone isn't it no, ratatouille no, is sliced uh, zucchini, tomato, like mm. all really, really like thinly sliced and arranged uh, in circles. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I've never even seen the film. I figure it's just got rats. No rats. They do make ratatouille in the film. It is a key plot point. Right, yes. Right. Yeah, I haven't. Seen and there's like a little like, like thing of like squash mash, like in the like the thumb mm. and like a little bit of yeah, dill, a little on swirl in there. Yeah. So all, I think, um, yeah, also makes well, an extremely. Is not making a great sandwich because a dagmar a thousand percent cannot cook um she's basically just put dry meat on dry bread um so after eating a mountain of that the ratatouille is probably nice yeah finish it off refreshing Ooh, that's flavors and moisture mm. it's good some kind of balance mm. you know how i like root vegetables <laughs> so, after a very eventful and exciting day, each of you eventually settle down to either get a night's sleep or whatever Morzod is doing. Oh, right. Um, Where's Morzod? Where did you Where did you leave Morzod? Uh, one of the taverns. I forget which one, but he's he's fine. He's having fun. He's got. Did you see that guy who was with the relatively chill? Oh, the one. Dude? Hit yeah, the, pajama hit the, daddy. Hit the metal. Yeah, hit yeah, the metal. with the popcorn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. It, he was hanging out with him. It, it'll, it'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, he made a friend. So, uh, yeah. after yeah. three of you have retired to your rooms, uh, Orsi is again mm -hmm. woken by a voice in his head. Again, yeah. it is uh, your old friend, the cleric, whose name I've just blanked out. Brackens. That's the Brackens. one. And the voice says. Oh. Time zones. Uh, sorry. Uh, need. Uh, and uh, need. Oh, good grief. I've forgotten everybody's names. Um, Cass? Is it Cass? Cass, Cass yes. 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 Uh, a lot of names. Uh, so the voice is. Uh, sorry. Cass needs answer from you soon. Should he come, sorry, should he go to the Wandering Isles? Yes, no. I think he just blurts out yes. Okay. And then he like rambles on how many words fits in uh, about his day and asks how Bracken's doing, but just keeps going. <laughs> Way over 25. Yeah, cuts off. Vitericus. 
so adorable. Vitericus, you wake in the middle of the night. Uh, it's a moment where you're not entirely sure why. Um, there was a dream, maybe, uh, probably a minor anxiety dream for Vitericus. I'd imagine he'd have a lot of those. Um, but there's now just a faint silver glow in your room. And as Vitericus turns his head, he sees Engadon, the All Slaver, not in person, but the projection uh, that he first spied when he was near death in the Ginault ruins. And she looks at him and says, There you are. You are very hard to find. And that's where we're going to end today's session. Thank you, everybody, for watching this insanity. We will be back next week to find out uh, what happens in with this particular conversation and also whatever happened to Morzod Grodgovans. <laughs> Have a great week. Thank you for watching. Bye.